of this taking place, of course, with the mellifluous uh, strains of uh, music by the orchestra who are inside the parliament building. And God bless Antigua is ringing out the strains of, is ringing out and being the soundtrack for the proceedings here as the family look on uh, as the cortege is starting, the procession starts from the parliament building. And so members of uh, the Bird family are now essentially making their way to the vehicle that will take them as part of the cortege to the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium for the uh, proceedings here. As I said, one that is rich with symbolism, one that is rich with the solemnity and the dignity and the majesty of state funerals. All this essentially uh, being uh, done by the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force leading the way, the tip of the spear in terms of organizing the events here. Everything that you're seeing here, all the routines, all the drills, would have been rehearsed and practiced several times, making sure that all is in place. Meticulous details would have been worked out, making sure that Celeste Brandt Bird receives the farewell that he so deserves as national hero and former prime minister who would have served this country with distinction and now being given all the dignity uh, that he certainly deserves in death as his uh, body is being taken uh, to the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium, of course, for the, the state funeral. And then, of course, later today for the interment at the St. John's Public Cemetery. Looking at, uh, as I said, the limousine, which will also be part of the... Uh, and if uh, uh, Sanchez, who is part of our team here, could just uh, get a quick look at the limousine, which is part of the uh, cortege here, the procession, which is en route to, of course, the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium. And they were seeing members of, uh, members of parliament and other uh, dignitaries who are actually heading on as part of the cortege, as part of the procession here. And it's really, really, as I said, a powerful occasion that we're witnessing here today. A state funeral for Celeste Bryant Bird. And to all our viewers on air and online, we will make sure that you're able to get all the occasion in live and living color. Until we see you next time at the Civil Emergency Stadium, I'm Garfield Burford on behalf of Ursula Charles Jr. Keep watching as we continue to keep you across the state funeral. All right, thank you so much, uh, Garfield Burford there and Ursula Charles Jr at the Parliament Building of Antigua and Barbuda, uh, bringing you live coverage as Prime Minister, former Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Sir Lester Bryant Bird, leading state at the Parliament Building of Antigua and Barbuda. Now, what we're looking at on our screens all right, is the cortege of Sir Lester, just about to make its way up to the Sir Vivian Richard Cricket Stadium. My name is R. Anderson Edgel, and I have along with me my co anchor. Hello. All right. <laughs> Rena Carroll. So, as Anderson said, we saw this morning that uh, Sir Lester Bird he laid in state uh, the private viewing by friends and family. And, you know, it's, it's such a sad day, but yet yes. still so celebratory of Sir Lester Bird's life. And just some things to note, Sir Lester Bird served as economic minister between the years of 1976 to 1991. And then in 1994, he became the second prime minister of Antigua and Barbuda. So he has done some, some significant things throughout his lifetime. And you know, we just wanna celebrate his life, the times, and of course his legacy. Absolutely, quite a feat of, of accomplishments under his belt, Sir Lester Bryant Bird. And we are happy that we have this day to celebrate our son of the soil. And he is commonly referred to, whereas his father, Sir Vera Cornwall Bird, 
has been referred to as the father of the nation. Celeste is referred to as the father of modern Antigua and Barbuda, quite rightfully so, because he implemented significant projects that would have thrust Antigua and Barbuda forward into the modern era to propel the economy of Antigua and Barbuda to the heights that it would have attained in the 90s and early 2000s. And for that, we have Sir Lester Bryant Bird to thank. Once again, as you'll see on your screens, the funeral procession for Sir Lester is making, is making its way from the Parliament building of Antigua and Barbuda, now on its way to the Sir Viv Richards Cricket Stadium for the funeral service. And you would have seen some clips earlier of the setup at Sir Vivian Richard Cricket, Cricket Stadium. Quite nice. I love the yes. flowers. I love that he's going to get such a wonderful send off. As you know, the ceremony, the service starts at 11 a.m. this morning. So that's where we are making our way right now. Quite fitting, as, as you mentioned, the uh, decor and the elaborate style of the presentation. And, all the preparations that would have been made over the past uh, few days, all culminating today, this very auspicious occasion as we celebrate the life, and not only the life, but also the legacy yes. of the second prime minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Sir Lester Bird. He served as prime minister, as you may have mentioned early, uh, between 1994 and 2004. Two very uh, critical terms, a critical decade mm -hmm. in, in the life of Antigua and Barbuda. Absolutely. Yeah. Significant developments taking place during the course of those 10 years. And we would have heard Burford said earlier, along with Ursil, that he was instrumental in the hospital. When we think of AUA, these are all things that he makes sure. When we think about the heritage keep here, these are things that he would have led the way for us. Certainly. And in addition to that, uh, well, you did mention uh, the, the Heritage HQ, that, that whole complex, yes. that whole area of St. John's City. It would be difficult um, to, to place a, a dollar value on, uh, in terms of uh, the, the contribution of, of that space to the economic development and the GDP of Antigua mm -hmm. and Barbuda over the years. It, it, is, it is tremendous. Um, how that thought would have blossomed into uh, that project and come to fruition and have, would have provided countless jobs and, and countless opportunities for income and economic development in Antigua and Barbuda. Of course, for many years, uh, our country, Antigua and Barbuda, would have been uh, the, the center for, for cruise tourism in, in, in this region. And we, we have Celeste and, of course, uh, his, his team of individuals that would have surrounded him uh, during that period to thank uh, for bringing Antigua and Barbuda into this new modern era. We thank his father, uh, Severe Cornwall Bird, for laying the foundation. Yeah, but apart from Severe, uh, and as our uh, current prime minister would have said on, on many occasions, there's not another individual um, that would have contributed as extensively uh, to the, the socio-economic development as of our Sir country. As Bird has, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. And he was educated at the Antigua Grammar School. Yes. He went to the University of Michigan and Gray's in London, in Gray's in London. So when we think about him not only being a person for Antigua and Barbuda. He was also educated. He was also a family man. Yes. He was so well-rounded as a citizen, prime minister, and someone that Antiguans and Barbudans love so dearly. You know, I'm, I'm very young. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, as yes. I was growing up, the person that you would so look up to, you'd be, hi, Sir Lester Bird. Yes. Hello, Lester Bird is around. So these, these are things that I know people look at, and especially the younger generation who grew up hearing about Sir Lester Bird. And the procession is making its way now yes. up to the stadium, as we can see here. 
All right, so they're, they're currently on what looks like uh, the, the factory road, uh, just passing the government workshop and then they will make their way onto a newly paved section of that road on their final journey to the Sir Viv Richards uh, Cricket Stadium. And one thing I would, I would add, Rainel, is that Celeste's legacy and, and contribution um, is not only uh, restricted, our knowledge of his legacy and his contribution is, is not limited to Antigua yes. and Barbuda. He's also very well known throughout the region as, as a regionalist. He was instrumental in the formation and the activities of the, the OECS, the Organization of mm -hmm. Eastern Caribbean States. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you that I feel proud, along with I'm sure many Antiguans and Barbudans, that, that we have this giant of a man, this, this, this stalwart, this, this tremendous uh, icon. Uh, in Antigua and Barbie that we claim as a son of the soil, as our very own, who would have made extensive contributions, uh, not only locally, yes. but also contributions that, that go beyond the, the borders and, and the 108 square miles of Antigua and Barbuda. That is indeed something that all of us as Antiguans and Barbudans should be extremely uh, and tremendously proud of. Definitely. And I know our friends across the OECS and those persons who would have worked with him during his time has sent their condolences. Yes. They have been showing their respects and I'm sure many of them are viewing this live with us today as well. Absolutely. Now, if you're just joining us, uh, we're looking at live images of the funeral procession now leaving uh, just left, uh, just leaving from the Parliament building of Antigua and Barbuda, and it's making its way up to the Sir Vivian Richards Cricket Stadium, where we will have the funeral service for Sir Lester Brian Bird. And at this time, I'm sure persons are already seated in the stadium waiting for the ceremony to begin. As we know, the gates opened at 8.30 a.m., so persons are there to show their final respect. Yes, and there we have a live shot because we're bringing you extensive coverage of this very important occasion today. Now, Lester Bird was... A, an athlete, a well-respected athlete, yes. and there we see what appears to be our members or representatives from various sporting bodies in Antigua and Barbuda lining the sides of the road to pay their final respects, of course, as the procession moves past uh, that football field there. And you know, he's getting such an amazing send-off, nothing less than what he deserves. You know, it's been three days of mourning and today we are saying our final farewells. You know, after the ceremony, he's going to be taken down to the St. John's Public Ceremony, sorry, cemetery, Correct, yes. <laughs> where he will be laid to rest. Of course, in the cemetery, this is only for dignitaries and family members. And he'll be laid to rest, as you, as you mentioned, uh, uh, next to his, his mother. Mm -hmm. And we understand that that was, oh, beautiful. Look wow. at those images. Antigans and Barbudans. Yes. Even in this... The this, Sir Lester Bird that yes. we all know and have grown to love, still love and appreciate. A very heartwarming moment for us here in Antigua and Barbuda. And you know, seeing this, the family must be so proud, you know. When it comes to politics, persons tend to segregate, but this has brought us all together wow. again. And we just want to say, it's such a time that we understand the contributions that he has made to Antigua and Barbuda. We can recognize it, appreciate it, and I'm so happy that we were able to give him some of his flowers yes. while he was alive. Yes, yes. It's indeed a very special time for us here in Antigua and Barbuda. And of course, uh, for folks joining us on the World Wide Web uh, for this, it's very, wow. it's very important day for us in Antigua and Barbuda as we celebrate the life and the legacy of Celeste 
Brian Bird. Still making their way to the stadium, now passing the Antigua and Barbuda Transport Board. Just trying to give you an indication of, of where we are, uh, the directions uh, that we're traveling in. And we see it's a, it's a fairly uh, long uh, procession, several mm -hmm. cars uh, bearing the, the family members and of course other dignitaries uh, who would be attending this state funeral. Now what, I, what I'm seeing on the screen right now uh, seems to be images just outside of the stadium. We have members of the military uniformed quite nicely yes. as they await the arrival of the funeral procession. We're bringing you extensive coverage, team coverage, we call it here this morning, right here on ABS television. The state funeral, it is, of Sir Lester Bryant Bird. Stay with us. We'll be with you throughout the course of the day. The state funeral, the official funeral, the state funeral comes up in a few short moments at 11 a.m. Following the funeral, we'll head over to the public cemetery for the burial of Celeste. And we know that there are many persons waiting today to give their tribute. One of, one of those groups are the choir. They will be taking us through with some songs, just honoring the life and ensuring that he has a great send off today. And Shana Keisha is actually a part of the choir, so I know that they will do an amazing job. Certainly, certainly. Now, if my memory serves me correct, uh, we are now passing the Seaview Farm uh, main road, mm -hmm. the Seaview Farm corner. So we're on the final stretch yes, now. We're going to make it there shortly. I, I would assume within the next maybe seven minutes, Correct. we should be at the Sir Vivian Richards Cricket Stadium. Correct. And we saw that the military, the Defence Force is there waiting to welcome and start the ceremony. And we have coverage cameras covering all angles on this occasion. Stay with us here on ABS television. Arrive at the Sir Viv Richards Cricket Stadium. He lost sight of his responsibilities to his family. So that's one thing they always mention, that he was a father, an uncle, a brother. They really appreciated Sir Lester Bird. Now it's remarkable to think um, when you're the the daughter or, or, or the child of such an important figure and you almost have to share him with the everyone world. else <laughs> with the rest of Antigua and Barbuda with the rest of the world because he was an international man traveling uh, to various uh, uh, destinations various countries um, to do bidding for Antigua and Barbuda to advance our country but I understand from listening to an interview with his daughter, Danielle Bird, his eldest daughter, that in spite of all that, all of his responsibilities, all of his commitments to this awesome task of thrusting Antigua and Barbuda into the 21st century, mm -hmm. he never lost sight of his family. Wow. That speaks of the measure of the man. Mm -hmm. It's significant uh, to note yes. that he managed to have such a great balance That's the word. between his family life and, of course, still ensuring Antigua and Barbuda is placed at the forefront for economic, economic development. Absolutely. Now, stay with us in a few short moments. We will join the rest of our coverage team at the Sir Vivian Richards Cricket Stadium. We have Ursel Charles Jr. along with Garfield Burford. 
both of whom will be joining in a few short moments at the Sir Viv Richards Stadium for the funeral service so we're of just Sir Lester. Going around the roundabout now just before they pull into the Sir Vivian Richards Cricket Stadium. Of course, we know that the ceremony will take place here and persons are anxiously waiting to say they fi their final goodbyes. Of course, social distancing will be happening in the stadium. Persons were asked to walk with their vaccination cards and ID. So we know that everything is in place to have a perfect send off this morning. So they have arrived at the Sir Vivian Richards Cricket Stadium. So now we see that the military is in place, the police, the firefighters, they're all here to give Sir Lester the send off that he so deserves. Of course, we know it's been three days of mourning, today being the final day. And we are looking at everyone lined up to ensure that the ceremony goes as planned. And Renel, the, the words that, that stands out in my mind when I'm looking at these images is precision. Yes. Precision. And we've seen that uh, all morning uh, from, from the members of, of the military, the fire brigade, and the police service. Precision. Absolutely befitting of our great national hero and former prime minister Celeste, the way in which he conducted the business mm -hmm. of Antigua and Barbuda was with precision. And we see that uh, metaphorically in the presentation of our uh, military bodies here this morning for this grand send off of Celeste. And you know, it's not very often that we have state funerals, so definitely these guys had to dust their shoes off, get into shape to Certainly. ensure that Sir Lester Bird got exactly what he deserves. Certainly. Absolutely. It's indeed a privilege and an honor for us here to bring you live coverage of the state funeral for Sir Lester Bryant Bird former Prime Minister and national hero yes. here in Antigua and Barbuda. Now we're seeing these military bodies, the Coast Guard, the Fire Brigade, the Army, slowly marching into the stadium for the commencement of the state funeral for Celeste. And of course, all of this is taking place in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. In yeah. a pandemic. However, all the protocols have been followed and our teams, the teams that are putting together the state funeral, have done an excellent job in maintaining the standard mm -hmm. and the celebration and the excellence that Celeste does indeed deserve on yeah. this occasion. I'm sure if Sir Lester could look at us right now, he would be smiling. He would be very happy that persons have taken the time to acknowledge him and respect the contributions that he has made to this destination and of course towards regional integration certainly and earlier we would have mentioned um, quite a, a number of, of his contributions in various uh, facets of antigua and barbuda uh, ranging from the economy to tourism mm -hmm. uh, to to health care just about every area. Definitely, and to the Heritage Key project that yes, you mentioned. The AUA, and we must mention the Mount St. John Medical Center, yes. formerly, and now the and Sir, Sir Lester Bryant Bird. Bird Medical oh. Center. And we heard throughout the course of, of these two weeks of mourning, mm -hmm. um, 
some of the details of and stories behind some of the accomplishments. We've learned that there was tremendous pushback, for example, um, to Celeste's vision to construct what is now the Celeste Bird Medical Center. Yes. And it was a long and an odious battle uh, to, to get to the stage of what we see now, what we're able to benefit from now. Uh, the struggles including, included uh, getting the necessary financing, um, putting together the, the drawings, the, the whole proposal as to what this facility uh, would entail and, and would be capable, the services that it would be capable of providing uh, folks in Antigua and Barbuda. But in spite of the challenge, yes. in spite of that challenge, Celeste was able to take hold and, and lay hold of his vision and see that project to fruition. Yeah, and I remember the years when there was criticism, lots of criticism about the construction of, of the hospital on the hill. They even referred to it as a white elephant. <laughs> but now, today, we are reaping uh, the fruits of that seed that was planted. Yes, by Sir Lester Bird. And you know, what is clear is that he towered large over the polit political landscape for decades. So as you mentioned, so it's literally and figuratively, he towered over yes. it. And of course, he got through it today. We are celebrating his life. We are looking forward to the ceremony that will take place shortly in Sir Vivian Richards Cricket Stadium. We are looking at, as Anderson mentioned, the fire brigade, the Coast Guards, the police officers, uh, the Defense Force coming together to ensure that this send-off is one that is fitting for our national hero, Sir Lester Bird. Absolutely. And we're seeing the images of the military band uh, playing. I so wish I could hear the tune <laughs> that, was, that is being rendered uh, as we speak. We also see uh, several uh, dignitaries yes. on foot as part of this procession into the stadium. It's a glorious day. We're happy that the sun has been good to us yes. today. All the elements. <laughs> All the elements certainly uh, have been good to us. And I'm sure we can say the elements have coordinated mm -hmm. among themselves to honor yes. our fallen hero on this day, this incredible day, where Celeste Brian Bird, former Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda and national hero, will be laid to rest. I'm certainly looking forward uh, to the tributes. I am as well. I know that there are many persons who are waiting to give their final words to take us through their experience of the life of Sir Lester Bird. And of course, whether, whether it's singing, speaking us through, they all are ready. This morning, of course, we saw that Sir Lester Bird laid in state where family and friends got their final viewing of him. Now we are going into the Sir Vivian Richards Cricket Stadium. Then we will head to the St. John's Public Cemetery where we'll, it will be his final resting place. I do remember we're bringing you live coverage of the state funeral for Sir Lester right here in Antigua and Barbuda. Procession now making its way into the stadium for the funeral service.
Now we're going to pause our commentary just for a bit so that you can enjoy and take in not just the sights but also the sound of this procession. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now what we're seeing on screen is that the pallbearers have now flanked the hearse with the military bearers on the outside. Let's watch on. If you're just joining us, you're looking at live images of the state funeral for Celeste Brian Bird. At this time, we're going to turn our coverage over to our outside broadcast team at the stadium, Garfield Burford and Ursel Charles Jr. Celeste Bryant Bird, national hero and former Prime Minister of this country. We want to say thanks to our broadcast team who's been with us throughout the morning. Our Anderson Edgel and Renel Carroll currently in studios. My name is Ursula Charles Jr. welcoming you to the grounds of the Civilian Riches Cricket Stadium, the site of the state funeral this morning. We've just had the entry of the Governor General, His Excellency Sir Rodney Williams, and we are now standing in the presence of Senator Gail Christian. Senator Gail Christian, of course, a government senator in the Upper House of Parliament here in Antigua, Barbuda, and she's going to be offering further recollections on the life and times of Celeste. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Arthur. Thank right. you for sharing with me this morning again. Good morning, Antigua and Barbuda. Well, let's just talk about uh, the legacy of Celeste. A lot has been made of his, his contribution developmentally to the country. What would you think is his, his lasting political legacy? I think, Ursel, for me, it is, or would be rather, his approach to politics and his approach to governance. And I think today is especially, an especially good day to reflect, or the perfect day rather, to reflect upon that. There is a song that I think was penned by the chairman of the party, the Honorable Chet Green, um, you know, uh, um, to reflect, so to speak, on Celeste. And at the start of the song, there's a clip from a speech that he gave. And in essence, what Celeste said is that there is no need for acrimony within the political system. He believed in raising the level of our electoral discourse so that when we dialogue with each other, irrespective of party affiliation, that we do so in a way that would best serve the people of Antigua and Barbuda and the interest of Antigua and Barbuda. And that is something that is going to stay with me, for I too believe that if our goal is the further development of Antigua and Barbuda, then we can agree to disagree without the acrimony, without the vitriol, and without um, the contempt. So that is what is at the back of my head. A, a, a Antigua and Barbuda, this is how we can honor him, an Antigua and Barbuda, where we can, where ideas can contend and where people can have differing views, but respect each other. He also said that freedom is not the right to do as you please, when you please, however you please. Um, and, and, and those are things that will stay with me, Arcel. Those are things that will stay with me. If, he, if we regard him as the father of modern Antigua and Barbuda, then it behoves us all to commemorate Celeste Bird by, you know, engaging in wholesome dialogue.
So for me, that is his legacy politically. Uh, do you think, if, as we now see the cortege making its way onto the grounds here, of course, flanked by members of the Antigua Barbuda Defence Force, I'm showing our, our members of our, broadcast, our team at home and, and further abroad, uh, seeing this on their screens right now, the outriders ahead of the cortege, of course, Honorary Paul Bearer is accompanying uh, the hearse as well as it makes it way, its way to centre stage. Uh, Senator, do you think that it's transcended throughout the party? Of, of course, during his tenure uh, as Prime Minister, do you think it's something that has, has you said it's impacted you personally, do you see that playing out within the political sphere now? Is it more that we could work on? I, I think so, but certainly a lot more work is needed. I know that there are those who espouse the view, talk as you like, do as you like, but you cannot. You don't build a democracy um, that way. And so as I see that her approaching, I am just reminded of everything that Celeste Bird, you know, stood for, everything that he believed. And I hope that today we can reflect on the contribution he made to Antigua and Barbuda, not just to its physical development, not just to moving it from an agricultural state to one, you know, based on tourism, not just about the growing of the economy and all of that, but just the way he did politics, if I may put it that way. Um, we've come to a time right now, I mean, the world, not just Antigua and Barbuda, is facing a, a mighty challenge and that is to say the pandemic and you see so many differing views um, coming forth as a result of it so now more than ever we need to raise the level of our discourse dialogue with each other in a more wholesome manner so that is what is on my mind um, this morning as we gather here to celebrate um, Celeste. Uh, we're going to let you go in a second, Senator, yeah. but just to give credence to what you said, much of the political hierarchy has actually asked that today we put aside these political divisions of yes. ours, yes. Uh, band it yes. together, just to, to pay homage to the great man right. he was. And, right, and we have seen members of the opposition here, former Prime Minister Baldwin Spencer um, is here, the leader of the United Progressive Party, Mr. Harold Lovell, is also here. I know that the leader of the opposition, the Honorable Jamal Pringle, will pay tribute today and so I mean at the end of the day and Celeste said it we are one Antigua and Barbuda and we do not develop and cannot develop if we do not unite we can have differing views but let's dialogue in a wholesome and I, that's a takeaway in a wholesome manner minus the vitriol minus the acrimony even if we don't see things um, eye to eye. Glad to see that you, you're holding true and, and holding steadfastly uh, to those convictions of Celeste. <laughs> Senator Christian, thank you so much for joining us. I know you want to join, join your group back. All right, thank you so much. For Senator Gail Christian there, who would have been sharing her, her thoughts on the, the legacy, uh, those, those lasting memories of Celeste in terms of his approach to uh, political dialogue and, and to whether or not we agree or disagree. The fact is that we are all in it for the betterment of this country. As we're now seeing members of the Defence Force lift the, the coffin, I'm now joined by Mrs. Garfield Burford, who's been very hard at work since early this morning. Uh, Garfield, now seeing uh, much of the precision we've been talking about all morning as the, the coffin now makes its way through. Yes, uh, great to be back with you, Ursula, and um, great comments as usual from Senator Gail Christian. Uh, it was amazing the, the way she spoke, not only in this interview, but also when we interviewed her for our feature last night, uh, early this week, in which she talked about the tremendous impact that Celeste would have had on her in terms of her own political social sojourn and start, and uh, essentially giving her the confidence, inspiring her in her the confidence that she could actually do a, a, very, a very good job. And uh, she, she remembered saying that her heart almost melted when essentially, and, and, and her, uh, you know, feeling about him rose so much when, when he, you know, she, she was a little bit concerned when he offered her a job as a senator, when he offered her a position as a senator. And she was wondering at what point would she tell him that she was a young mother uh, with, with a, you know, a young uh, child and so on, and whether or not that would have impacted the, his decision. And when she eventually mustered up the courage to say it, he looked at her as if to say, why on earth would you think that that would be a problem? And uh, she, she was so relieved, she said, and, and uh, you know, her, her admiration for him actually you know, rose even more. So a uh, tremendous way in which uh, she would have spoken about the humanity of, of Celeste. But you're right, as we're seeing, I mean, this is one of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the real, when we talk about the majesty of the occasion, 
just that image that the, our viewers are looking at now with uh, members of the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force and the audience is being asked to stand here. Mm -hmm. But members of the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force very methodically, clinically, precisely carrying the coffin, uh, the flag draped coffin of Celeste Bryant Bird uh, to the position where it will be staged on the, uh, on the beer on, under the tent uh, is very powerful. Let, let's go over to the stage. So the Lord pities them that fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as the flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him. And his righteousness to children's children. this morning as we as you said 11 o'clock sharp protocols firmly in place absolutely and uh, the as i said we welcome all our listeners on all media across antigua and barbuda and of course beyond uh, several other entities are taking this broadcast as well of course as soon as the coffin is placed securely on the bear we'll of course have the start of the proceedings here in terms of the additional uh, elements of the state funeral. This is a state funeral for Celeste Bryant Bird, who would have served with distinction, and now he's being laid to rest with distinction and the dignity and the solemnity as the nation pays its final respects to Celeste. Speaking of the solemnity, we've got members of the upper and lower houses of parliament gathered just beneath us here at Garfield. And as Senator Christian would have said, pulling aside, putting aside their political persuasion differences, sitting amongst each other this morning, as she would have mentioned, we've got member of parliament for Barbuda, you know, Trevor Walker, we've got the leader of the United Progressive Party, we've got Harold Lo Mr. Harold Lovell, the Honorable Jamal Pringle, of course, leader of uh, the opposition, he will be paying tribute to uh, Celeste this morning in the official program. For listeners on uh, radio, uh, we will indicate that, of course, uh, what is taking place now is that the coffin of Celeste, flag draped, uh, is being securely placed on the bear in front of uh, the stage here, the podium that is being set up under a tent. Uh, so welcome respite from, uh, sorry, welcome respite from uh, the rather warm conditions here. There's, thankfully, there's a nice cooling wind 
and now members of the uh, Defence Force who would have securely done their duties to carry the coffin of Celeste are now making their way back on to the red carpet here to march back out as we're getting ready for the start of the proceedings. Indeed. So the state funeral here, if you're just joining us, for the late Celeste Bird, national hero, former Prime Minister of Antigua, Barbuda. Uh, Celeste passed on the, the 9th of August uh, this year, 2021, after 83 years of, of contribution, uh, almost 40 years of, or more than 40 years of contribution. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The hour is coming and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. We brought nothing into this world and it is certain we shall carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ lived Again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Our Savior Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and of hell. Because I live, you will live also, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain, for the first things are passed away. Your Excellency Sir Rodney Williams, Governor General, and Your Excellency Lady Williams, Honorable Gaston Brown, Prime Minister and Minister Maria Brown, members of cabinet, members of parliament, official representatives of the governments of Barbados, Dominica, the United States of America, and the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, members of the diplomatic corps, members of the clergy, Lady Patricia Bird and members of the Bird family. All listening and viewing by way of ABS radio and television and by live streaming. Ladies and gentlemen all, good morning. We gather here today on this very solemn occasion to celebrate the life of Sir Lester Bryant Bird a national hero and former Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda. We have come to give God thanks for his life, for his service, for his commitment, and for all that he meant to his people. We therefore celebrate and worship God as we sing the hymn to God be the glory, great things he hath done.
Please be seated and let us pray. Most gracious God, we turn to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement, praying that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace so that even as we mourn the death of one whom we knew and loved, we may not be overcome by this trial, but we may hold fast, trusting in your goodness and mercy. Assure us, O Lord, O God, that death is not the end of those who trust in you. And may our hearts be so composed in the Holy Spirit that all fear and bitterness may be swallowed up in the light and peace you give to your troubled children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, has given us the pledge of eternal life. Lift us, we pray, above our present distress and sorrow, and shed the light of your grace and glory upon us, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brethren, we are met here in this solemn moment to commend Lester Brian Bird into the hands of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent his son Jesus Christ to be our Redeemer, by whose stripes we are healed and in whose name alone we have salvation. Let us then call to mind the life of our deceased, deceased brother in humble trust. Hear the words of Holy Scripture. Amen. We now invite the Antigua and Barbuda Trades and Labor Union as they pay tribute to Sir Lester. His Excellency, the Governor General, Honorable Prime Minister, Members of Parliament of the Upper and Lower Houses, Honorary Councils General and Foreign Representatives, members of the Byrd family, members of the Dip Diplomatic Corps, members of the clergy, comrades and friends, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor for the Antigua Trades and Labor Union to address this national gathering at this sad yet momentous event in the history of our island. The death of Sevier Cornwall Bird in 1999, and now the departure of Sevier, of Celeste Bird in 2021, two decades later, speaks to the mourning, the struggle of the colonial system, and from that level to sovereignty, from an underdeveloped to a wealth creation, to the achieving of first world ambitions in the building of an economic powerhouse. Celeste Bryant Bird was born on the 21st of February, 1938, nearly one year before the ATNLU was founded on 16th January, 1939. It could be said that Celeste and the ATNLU grew up in an evolving Antigua and Barbuda learning to negotiate the best pathway leading to sovereignty and development. The several Antigua and Barbuda Labor Party administrations from 1976 to 2004 gave workers a choice that was not available in the monocrop economy it inherited. After 1976, Antigua and Barbuda began to experience full employment Workers enjoyed a higher standard of living, 
evidenced by widespread home ownership and growth of the nation's gross domestic product as expressed in our country's ranking on the United Nations Human Development Index in 1994. That placed us 29th in a world of 169 countries. These amazing achievements were possible because of the several successful elections of the Labour Party and the leadership of Sir Lester Byrd. Sir Lester Bryant Byrd maintained and strengthened the bond between the ATNLU and the Antigua Labour Party. The party symbolically headquartered at its, its body at 46 North Street while retaining its drive to create jobs new and new employment. The industrial park along Coolidge Highway, now Sir George Walter Highway, employed as many as 3,000 workers. Workers were there made beds, mattresses, refrigerators, laundry, the biscuit factory also was there, solar water heaters, and many other products for export and domestic com consumption. A manufacturing sector was created to supplement agriculture and their services. Celeste Brian Bird, as Minister of Tourism, began to implement new strategies to grow the tourism sector. Between 1952, when the sector was first imagined, and 1972, when sugar died and tourism became most important, 33 luxury hotels had been constructed across Antigua and Barbuda. The Minister of Tourism was determined to double the number of rooms and beds available in order to increase the employment potential in the hotel sector. Tourism became so successful during its tenure that it sucked up workers from every other sector and led to an increase in the number of immigrant workers who entered Antigua and Barbuda's workforce. The taste of success was on everyone's lips. Celeste so improved the tourism product. He built the Heritage Key Complex, dredged the St. John's Harbor further to allow cruise ships to discharge passengers in St. John's. He built the Royal Antiguan Hotel, a nine-story building that was set back from the beach and which became a safe haven for guests during hurricanes. Many of the hotels fronting on their beaches sent their guests to the Royal Antigua for safety. He built the Heritage Key Hotel in St. John's for business persons wanting to be in the center of commerce. His primary object was to increase employment possibilities and to allow the ATNLU to experience growth and longevity. The ATNLU is 82 years old, strong and well. Sir Lester Brian Bird inherited a legacy upon which he built, causing the ATNLU and the ABLP to enjoy a strong presence that will endure many generations to come. He inherited the mantle of leadership from Sevier Cornwall Bird in 1994, becoming the second leader of the party. The president of the ATNLU inherited his mantle from Senator William Robinson in 1994, the same time as Sir Lester, and after 12 years' experience in the trade union. It is not accident that the ATNLU had only six presidents in 82 years, and that the ABLP had three leaders in 75 years. The steady hand of history has ensured that the vision for the success of these twin institutions has lasted and served the people well. Today, the Antigua Trades and Labor Union says farewell to a greater fighter and champion. He enlarged the number of public workers and made Herculean efforts to meet their expectations during negotiations. His word was his bond, and his people loved him for his unflinching courage. As we say in our movement, a song from the hymn that we usually sing. 
that through though cowards flinch and traitors sneer, Comrade Lester Bird kept the red flag flying for many decades. May his soul join the ancestors in glory. And again, he would end every Labor Day by saying to the crowd before marching, the unity of labor is the salvation of our country. Long live Sir Lester Bryant Bird. The Antigua and Barbuda Labor Party Choir will now pay tribute. Celeste would have been a moving rendition for Celeste himself, and this is their way of paying homage to the great leader. Members of the choir are now making their way onto the uh, platform here, which is under a tent. Uh, nice, welcomed, cooling breeze as uh, uh, really caressing the grounds here at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium. An extraordinarily a wonderful uh, picture and a wonderful way to say farewell uh, to Celeste Bryant Bird. Great weather conditions, nice cooling breeze as the choir is now in position. Several members are now in position for, of course, uh, their tribute to Celeste Bryant Bird. And in a short while, you'll be hearing for those on uh, radio, of course, thank you so much for joining our broadcast. This is, of course, a welcome to several members of uh, or several radio stations who are joining our coverage at this point. Yes. The Labour Party's creed words by which we live. We believe in the empowerment of our people, the principles of good governance, the elimination of poverty, the provision of full employment, equitable distribution of wealth, and the equality of opportunity and justice.
So there you have it, the uh, tributes from the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party Choir, of course led by Senator Mary Claire Hurst, whose voice you heard at the start of the proceedings there, talking about the creed of the party. So the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party Choir paying tributes in song to Celeste Bryant Bird, of whom uh, Senator Mary Claire Hurst spoke glowingly this morning during our interview, talking about the impact that Celeste would have had on her as a young individual in the political sphere and indicating that he would have paid a significant amount of attention to young people. So Samir Claire Hurst really, really feeling uh, the impact of the loss very, very well, uh, very, very uh, tough indeed. So the Antigua Barbuda Labour Party Choir and it will be followed by a presentation of condolences, St. John's Rural East Constituency Branch. So. Uh, that will be coming up right after members of the Antigua Barbuda Labour Party Choir leave the stage. Uh, there are, it's quite a big choir, so they take some time to actually exit stage left. And so they are the last as made their way from the stage. And so in a very short while, we'll be having the next in line for the tributes, which is a presentation of condolences St. John's Rural East Constituency Branch. And now we welcome a tribute in poetry. Your Excellency, Sir Rodney Williams, may I be granted permission to accept the protocols established to include national hero, Sir Isaac Vivian Richards. There can be no debate that Celeste Bryant Bird was an intellectual of the highest caliber. He was the quintessential orator, scholarly, cultured, literate, a man who loved music of any genres. The family is elated that music icon David Rudder of Trinidad and Tobago remade his 30-year-old song, Smiling Eyes of Steel, in tribute to Celeste Bryant Bird, which you will hear rendered later today. Celeste's fascination with literature made him well-read. It also resulted in him authoring three books and dozens of poetry. He particularly loved the writings of Guyanese Martin Carter, who was one of the few authentically optimistic English writing Caribbean poets. Even though Celeste is no longer with us in body, his memory will not die. His memory will live on. Today, the family remembers Celeste's love of poetry through Martin Carter's Death of a Comrade. Death must not find us thinking that we die. Too soon, too soon, our banner draped for you, Celeste. We would prefer the banner in the wind not bound so tightly in a scarlet fold. Not sudden, sudden with your people's tears, but flashing on a pole, we bear aloft, down and beyond this dark lane of rags. Dear comrade Lester, if it must be that you speak no more with us, nor smile no more with us, then let us take a patience and a calm. For even now the greener leaf explodes, sun brightens stone, and all rivers burn. Now from the morning vanguard, onward, dear comrade Lester, we salute you and we say, death will not find us thinking that we die.
Sir Lester was a strong advocate for youth development and empowerment. His work in Antigua and Barbuda, and particularly in St. John's Rural East, is a demonstration of his commitment. This is why the Honorable Minister Maria Brown and the constituency chose two young recipients of the Prime Minister's Scholarship to give tribute on behalf of the constituency. Please welcome music graduate Alfranik Joseph and law student Jamoy Morrison to do a rendition.
thank Alfranik and Jamoy for their rendition as they represented the St. John's Rural East constituency branch. We now invite Daniel Bird Brown, daughter of Sir Lester, as she brings the eulogy. His Excellency, the Governor General, Sir Rodney Williams and Lady Williams, Honorable Prime Minister Gaston Brown and Minister Maria Brown, members of the Cabinet, members of Parliament of both Houses, members of the judiciary, members of the clergy, visiting heads of delegation, members of the diplomatic corps, distinguished members of the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my family, friends, boys and girls, all here or listening overseas. There was a young boy who reveled in the freedom allowed running barefoot through the streets and playfields of the ovals and otters section of St. John's here in his beloved Antigua and Barbuda. He grew up on Tanner and Temple Streets under the guidance of his late mother, Lady Doris Lydia Bird, and his father, Severe Cornwall Bird Sr. The likes of Claude Earl Francis, McChesney George, Novell Richards, all lived in that Tanner Street home at some point where excellence was the order of the day. There was a young man who reveled in the challenge of athletic competition there was a man who reveled in the confrontation that is part of the balancing of the scales of justice. There was a leader, a sec our second prime minister, who reveled in the sheer satisfaction of a job done well, in the thrust and parry and exhilaration of the political arena. There is a national hero, Sir Lester Bryant Bird. KNH, and he lies here before us today. It is a challenge to eulogize any man, to capture not just the dates and facts and accomplishments of their lives, but also their personal sorrows and their joys, their times of reflection, the characteristics that bring light to the absolute essence of the person. To do this for such a giant in our history, who empowered a nation to catch his vision and to live the dream, is even more of a Herculean challenge. Sorrow fills our hearts at this sad moment, a sorrow that is deep and extremely personal. My father has silently closed the door of life and departed from us. Our lives will be empty in the areas that he had created and brightened for us. After months of working abroad, 
I followed my gut instinct and returned home to visit, even though I had left not more than two months before. I remember walking into his hospital room and being filled with an overwhelming mixture of love, of sadness, emotion, and pride. He smiled and tightly held my hand for most of my visit. It was profoundly heartbreaking. It brought me to the verge of tears and beyond, when my thoughts automatically flash back to the picture of the man I grew up knowing as my rock. How I wished I had never had to confront the reality of what I saw. Albert Einstein said, the value of a man should be seen in what he gives and not in what he is able to receive. In one word, my father was a man who gave. He was ingenious and gave much to his work, to his country, to his friends, and to his family. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, as we gather here to say goodbye to him, I would like not to speak in mourning of his death, but to speak in celebration of his life. Here was a life destined to demand notice, a life that exemplified brilliance. Sir Lester, brilliant Bryant Bird, as many referred to him. A life that inspired emulation, a life that burned bright so that the paths of others were illuminated along their way. My father was a strategic thinker, a visionary who was brilliant, innovative, and creative. As such, he contributed much to the development of this nation through his work and subsequent leadership of the Antigua Labor Party. He always led with humility and service. It was always about the people. He started in New York City giving of his time and effort through social work and followed on as one of the founding members and lifetime honoree of the Rotary Club of Antigua in 1972, whose motto proudly is service above self. His abiding interest in these areas are evident in such decisions made like the insistence of the creation of the Ministry of Social Transformation social and community services with an emphasis on combating poverty, enhancing equality, and improving the standard of living for all citizens in Antigua and Barbuda. Service, excellence, and generosity of spirit were his guides. He selflessly gave of his knowledge, his expertise, his skills, and many a time the last dollar in his pocket or even the shirt off his back. Our father was driven and passionate about developing the economy and improving the standard of living within our country. He had learned much from his years of living in and exposure to the cultures of the United States of America and of the United Kingdom. He was deeply concerned with the development and improvement of the Caribbean at large through the organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS, and CARICOM, the Caribbean community. He was a driving force behind the establishment of the OECS, which led to the signing of the Treaty of Bastyr, and he became its first chairman, despite being a deputy premier in 1981, before the independence of Antigua and Barbuda. He chaired CARICOM since his father the then Prime Minister, the late Vare Cornwall Bird Sr., devolved authority to him. He was a notably acknowledged regionalist and integrationist. He was very keen to initiate discussions that held a promise that was positive for Antigua and Barbuda. He initiated and implemented much in the local, regional, and international arenas during the 18 years that he was leader of the Antigua and Barbuda Labor Party. For example, he introduced the education levy in 1994 
that has become a model put forward by the World Bank for other states. He introduced the Antigua and Barbuda International Institute of Technology, ABET, in 1997. For the past 25 years, the ABET has taught computer systems and programming to our youth. He introduced offshore gaming that generated thousands of well-paying jobs until it was attacked by our neighbor to the north. The World Trade Organization, the WTO, has declared the attack unjust. He conceived of a University of Antigua and Barbuda, fulfilled by his successor at Five Islands. He provided more housing lands to the people of Rural East, such that the number of homeowners in his constituency more than doubled. The esteemed speakers before me and after me have and will espouse on the many accolades and accomplishments for which my father has been recognized. My father was living proof of how inspirational and perfectly imperfect a person can be. He was a good friend to many and best friend to very few. A good boss and colleague to those in his office, his cabinet, and his government. As a husband to his wife and father to his children, he loved and gave devotion the best and only way he knew how. When he fell short, and it led to sadness, anger, or disappointment. He acknowledged his culpability and humbly asked for acceptance of his frailties without judgment. My father disliked discord intensely, and especially amongst those he kept close to his heart. When the inevitable ebb and flow of life resulted in my siblings and I having a disagreement, I will forever remember his firm heavy timbered voice with an exaggerated version of his American twang saying, come on guys, give me an aspirin. Show me some generosity of spirit. He rarely raised his voice and never ever raised his hand in the traditional Caribbean culture of discipline. He didn't need to. Just knowing that we had disappointed him in some way was punishment enough and enough to calm the waters and bring back the smiles and laughter. Given the scope of his life and his accomplishments, the admiration and respect that he so rightfully deserved, it's tempting, I think, to remember my father as an icon, smiling and jovial, detached from the shenanigans of lesser men, but he himself would strongly resist such a colorless description. Instead, Dad insisted on sharing with us his doubts and his fears, his miscalculations and fallibility along with his victories. As the great Nelson Mandela said, I am not a saint unless you think of a saint as a sinner who keeps on trying. The character of the life he lived might be summed up in a few words. He was sincere, he was earnest, he was loyal, he believed in peace, in love, and in hope. He was dedicated to everyone and everything that held meaning to him and a place in his heart. He had a deep respect for intellectual prowess. As our former and second prime minister, he led our country and represented us in such a way that he exemplified leadership. He gave energy, commitment, and inspiration to all with whom he worked. The father I will remember was a happy, passionate, and dedicated person who carried many a burden for himself, his family, friends, and foe alike. A person who not only was cheerful within himself, but who gave much cheerfulness to others. Self-deprecating, one of his best qualities, was his ability to laugh at himself and find the positive in the most unjust and devastating of times. When betrayed personally or politically, he forgave. Over and over again, he would forgive. And over and over again, 
he would remind us that tolerance and understanding must flourish and grow. He reminded us that in politics, forgiveness and numbers matter. He had a most charismatic personality, a beautiful, huge smile, a booming laugh that brightened even your most challenging day, a delightfully unbalanced sense of humor, and a gentle, empathetic demeanor. He was truly deserving of one of his favorite nicknames given to him by his constituents of St. John's Rural East, the constituents that he fought for and loved so much and were so much a reason for his political being, which caused them to name him the Gentle Giant. And he will be their very special giant malt for all time. My father was bright, logical, systematic, astute, and insightful in his thinking. He was always willing to share his ideas and information. He was passionately interested in matters that positively affected humanity and would advise us on luminaries that inspired him, from the likes of the Dalai Lama to the Guyanese poet and political activist Martin Carter. In his career, both as a lawyer and a politician, he worked with passion, integrity, and energy. By his death, all the people who knew him, and many who didn't, now know they are missing a highly intelligent, big-hearted, vibrant individual with a rare friendliness and charm of personality. My father was a genuinely warm and wonderful individual, one we will miss greatly. Our sorrow is lessened only slightly with the comforting thought that we had the privilege to know him. And his insight has helped us, particularly in recent times, to understand and appreciate the value in forging a stronger, more loyal and loving family unit. Life is but a stopping place, a pause in what's to be, a resting place along the road to sweet eternity. We all have different journeys, different paths along the way. We all were meant to learn some things, but never meant to stay. Our destination is a place far greater than we know. For some, the journey is quicker. For some, the journey is slow. And when the journey finally ends, we will make that great step forward and find an everlasting peace as our special reward. When you say goodbye to a parent, you lose an identity, a place in the world. When the people who put you on this earth are no longer there, it changes everything. However, it is better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. And the price of that love is grief. And grief, grief is the price of that love. The stronger the love, the stronger the grief. To all who mourn, please believe that my family's hearts and prayers are with you at this most difficult time for all of us. We will never see the likes of a Celeste bird again. But let me say this to my peers and to the younger upcoming generation. Let me make it pellucidly clear. <laughs> My father's vision, his dreams, and work can be yours too. Use it as an example and a charge for the best within us. We have a responsibility to ourselves and to others around us to walk that path that he illuminated for the benefit of our country. Adlai Stevenson, a former US ambassador to the United Nations, once commented about a man and his contribution. It is not the years in a life that counts. It is a life in the years. Ladies and gentlemen, our father, Celeste Bryant Bird, lived, and we will all miss him. Our pledge to him 
is to join as a people and nation to perpetuate the ideals and values for which he devoted his life. And what an amazing life it was. God bless his memory, and God bless the people of Antigua and Barbuda. Thank you. The song, My Way, will now be rendered by Mr. Alan Seaton, accompanied by Mr. Khan Cordis. After which, we will take a look at a video, Smiling Eyes of Steel. absolute maestro at it. Uh, so Mr. Uh, Seaton is getting ready for uh, his song in tribute to his music.
wept and cried I've had my fill My share of losing And now as tears subside I find it all so amusing To think the song there, uh, My Way, by Mr. Arlen Seaton, accompanied by Mr. Can Cordes. Next up will be a video, Smiling Eyes of Steel. Smiling Eyes of Steel will be the uh, next item as part of the tributes here to Celeste Brian Bird. Of course, you're watching uh, the state funeral for Celeste Brian Bird. We should also welcome our listeners on radio. Several radio stations have joined us for this broadcast. And we welcome all the listeners on radio who have joined us for this simulcast. There's Caribbean Radio Lighthouse. There's also Nice FM 104.3, Point FM 99.1, Progressive 107.3 FM. We welcome all, our list all the listeners who have joined us for this simulcast. And thank you so much for joining us for this estate funeral for Celeste Brian Bird. Here are the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium in North Sound, Antigua. You just heard there the rendition of My Way by Mr. Arlene Seaton, accompanied by Mr. Can Cordes on Pan. Next up, a video, Smiling Eyes of Steel. Smiling Eyes of Steel. Earlier would have heard Daniel Bird Brown, the daughter of Celeste Brian Bird, with the eulogy. Disciple has left. 
Antigua and Barbuda is upward and empowerment of its people. The problem is we have so much freedom in Antigua and Barbuda that people believe it's a license to say what you like, do what you like. But freedom is not license to do what you like. Freedom is an opportunity for responsibility to develop. And we therefore need, as a group of people, wherever we may find ourselves, to understand that we have a duty to our country and to the next generation of Antigua and Barbuda. and sing the hymn, God Bless Antigua and Barbuda.
be seated. Tribute continues. We call on the Honorable El Jamal Pringle, leader of the opposition. Your Excellency, Sir Rodney Williams, Governor General, and Your Excellency, Lady Williams, Honorable Prime Minister Gaston Brown, Prime Minister and Minister Maria Brown, members of the Cabinet, members of Parliament, official representatives of the governments of Barbados, Dominica, the United States of America, and the Bo Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, members of the diplomatic corps, members of the clergy, Lady Patricia Bird, and members of the Bird family, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Everyone, no matter who he is, no matter who where he is from, leaves a legacy. Some people cast their footprints so firmly in the sands of time that no matter the severity of the elements, these footprints will never be removed. As a family man and an accomplished athlete, and the shrewd politician, Celeste Bryant Bird, impacted the lives of many in many ways. History supports that his secondary and tertiary years were spent excelling in education and in sports. He distinguished himself as an avid cricketer, having made the Leeward Islands team, and he was a long jumper whose agility earned him accolades at the Pan-American Games in Chicago. I believe that Celeste found his niche in field events as he rose to prominence as a long jumper while studying at the University of Michigan. What was striking about him was that he wanted to be an all-rounder. He had to create balance Therefore, his education did not suffer as a result of his athletic pursuits. He weighed his priorities and completed his studies in jurisprudence, leading to a career in law and ultimately politics. Celeste found prominence within the Antigua Labour Party as he filled his Senate years with robust debate and articulate presentation. And he was no less impressive in the House of Representatives when he took over the political reins from his father, Severe Cornwall Bird. His aim was to carry on that legacy and maintain that dynasty. And therefore, his calls to order were forceful. Though many would have disagreed passionately with his policies and mandates, he stood his ground. Celeste never gave up the fight for what he stood for and the principles in which he believed. Celeste served his country well, particularly in terms of economic development and by his representation in international forums. 
and I join Antigua and Barbuda in saying thank you and goodbye to an undisputed icon. On behalf of the United Progressive Party and on the, consti on the constituents of All Saints East and St. Luke, I extend sympathies and comfort to his wife, children, grandchildren, siblings, and other relatives and friends who mourn his loss. Sleep in peace, Celesta. Thank you. I now invite the Honorable Gaston E. Brown, Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, to give his tribute. Sir Rodney Williams, Governor General of Antigua and Barbuda, and Lady Williams, National Hero, Sir Vivian Richards, members of Cabinet, members of Parliament, members of visiting delegations, members of the Diplomatic Corps, comrades, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my distinguished sisters and brothers, I describe you all as sisters and brothers because this is a family occasion. All of us are bound together in the Antiguan and Barbudan family as one people, one nation with a common destiny. We have gathered in solemn cause to say farewell to a treasured and valued son, Celeste, as we entrust his soul to heaven, his name to history, and his memory to our hearts. In this moment of mourning, all but the most grudging in our nation are cleaved to one another in our sense of loss. Celeste Bryant Bird, a great giant among us, has departed our company, as each of us will eventually do. Yet, even though we knew this moment was inevitable, still it is hard to hold back the tears in our eyes and to quell the ache in our hearts because Celeste was a special son of the soil. A most talented and precious son, whose contributions spanned several areas of our development to include sports, politics, and law. He was an intellectual in his own right, with great oratorical skills. Celeste's contribution manifested itself in several physical artifacts to include Heritage Key, the Royal Antiguan Hotel, and Mount St. John Medical Center, which we renamed in his honor. The impression he left in this land, and on behalf of the people of this land, in the Caribbean region and externally, match his colossal size. Who could forget his bold statement as our nation's first foreign affairs minister at the United Nations just 11 days after independence in November 1981? Standing at his full height and looking the world community firmly in the eye, he declared, and I quote, we are very conscious of the smallest of our country. We are under no illusion 
that on our own we have the power to affect world trends and developments. However, we will not sit on the sidelines of international debate. We intend to forcefully stand up for principles in which we firmly believe. And being bold enough to dare participate in the challenge of the international community, we are inspired by the words of the late American President John F. Kennedy, who said, some ask why, I ask why not. We have asked why not, Celeste told the gathered nations. And then he declared to all, or for all to hear, we have resolved to participate fully in the work of this organization, and by so doing, contribute to our own development and to the promotion of economic and social advancement of all peoples." End of quote. The boldness of ambition for Antigua and Barbuda, the courage in demanding recognition of our people in the international community, the resolve to stand up for the rights of our people, these were all the characteristics of Lester Byrd that helped to define Antigua and Barbuda in global affairs. It encouraged another generation of Antiguan and Barbudan leaders, including me, not to allow our small size to deter us from a seat at the table of decision making or to accept anything but respect for our nation. Even before independence in 1981, Celeste had formulated a path for Antiguan and Barbuda's development and growth under the guidance of his late father, Surveyor Cornwall Bird Sr. Whereas Severe is the father of the nation, Celeste unquestionably is the father of modern Antigua and Barbuda. It was his vision of our country as a leading nation for tourism in the world that catapulted us from an underdeveloped economy into a country with one of the highest per capita incomes in Latin America and the Caribbean. It was the realization of his dream that he pursued relentlessly that elevated the quality of jobs available to our people and raised their standard of living. In September of 1978, with the collaboration of his longtime friends, Sir Robin Yearwood, Sir John St. Louis, and Hugh Marshall Sr., Celeste detailed out a wider vision for Antigua and Barbuda that set the stage for many of the achievements we can boast today. His motivational and inspiring speech was called a Declaration for Development. Delivered at a convention of the Antigua Labor Party on September 17, 1978, it laid out the blueprint for our nation's social, economic, and political development. He called for independence from Britain, although there were many too timid and faint-hearted who opposed it. History, he said, must not record that Antigua and Barbuda held on to the curtails of Britain to the very end, for it would be an insult to those who went before us and those who will come after. He declared that we would make a mockery of the many rebellions of our forefathers who either individually or collectively recognized our inherent right to be free of the British. And with conviction and determination, he proclaimed we would cast a stigma on our children and their children when they learned that after years of leading the way to freedom, Antigua did not have the courage to tear itself away from the British and proudly say, we are free. We are our own masters. We are an independent nation. Thus was the die cast, and the road to independence opened. Thus did we, after more than two centuries of exploitation, at last become a nation and a sovereign people with the right to govern our own affairs. In that same speech, Celeste opened the pathways to many things that we take for granted today. Among those things was recognition of the rights of women who had long suffered discrimination in employment and career advancement. Today, women dominate the highest echelons of our civil service, judiciary, health services, immigration, our Senate, and our financial services sector. Such was the foresight of Celeste Byrd such was his determination to make the people of our country a modern, inclusive, and open-minded society. In his own sense of modesty, he was later to say, and I quote, in my own humble view, I contributed to the building of a modern Antiguan Barbuda and a strong labor party, end of quote. 
sisters and brothers. Lester Bird also made a significant and lasting contribution to the creation and development of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS, and of the Caribbean community, CARICOM. Those contributions started long before he became prime minister. They began early in his service as foreign minister. He is rightly credited with being the motivational force behind the OECS and would have contributed to the creation of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank and the retention of the Eastern Caribbean Court of Justice, as well as the other organs of joint services from which the people of the OECS benefit today. In October of 1978, recognizing that while independence from Britain was imperative, that the small states of the Leeward and Windward Islands would encounter great difficulties if they attempted to sustain economic independence as individual units, Sir Lester proposed the formation of the OECS. As he put it at the time, the Leeward and Windward Islands, and I quote him again, can point a direction for CARICOM itself, for if we prove that we have the capacity to work together, ending competition and creating instead the atmosphere and, basic, and basis for economic integration, we will be better able to persuade the more developed countries to pursue this course, this course with us, end of quote. The formation of the OECS was a remarkable triumph in Tiga and Barbuda's foreign policy, even before our country became officially independent. Celeste was also a galvanizing figure in CARICOM to hold the organization together against threats of fragmentation arising over ideological differences between governments in the 1980s and sharp division after the US-led intervention in Grenada following the murder of Morris Bishop and leading members of his administration. When the time came for prudence, Celeste was a regional peacemaker, sharing the CARICOM team that ended constitutional conflict in St. Kitts Nevis in 1996, participating in resolving divisive election battles in Guyana in 1998, and in ending a corrosive political confrontation in St. Vincent and the Grenadines in 2000. It was also under his chairmanship of CARICOM and on a boat journey in 1997 between the Antiguan mainland and Jumbi Bay that he, P.J. Patterson, and the late Oyn Arthur, the Prime Ministers of Antigua, Barbuda, Jamaica, and Barbados, respectively, conceived and implemented the Caribbean Regional Negotiating Machinery that today bargains jointly for CARICOM countries on external trade matters. Celeste was also a leader who recognized talent and employed it in the service of Antigua and Barbuda. There was no small-mindedness, no parochialism, no provincialism in his thinking. He wanted to paint Antigua and Barbuda and CARICOM on a broad canvas. In this regard, he had no hesitation in publicly acknowledging the gigantic role that Saron Saunders played as collaborator on the regional and international stage. There, Celeste said, was, and I quote, an exceptional relationship which served Antigua and Barbuda well. In truth, those who knew it recognize the progressive thinking they brought to advancing the interests of small states, which many administrations continue to champion today and for which we have become globally prominent. Today, I believe that we as a people can declare that beyond a shadow of a doubt, Lester Bird made a giant-sized contribution to building modern Antigua and Barbuda and a strong Labour Party. It is a legacy that our nation and our party will forever remember and for which we will be eternally grateful. In the context of the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party and its governance of our country, in which Celeste Bird played such a noteworthy role, we should all recall that he was a lawyer and as such an officer of the court. For him, upholding the rule of law, especially respect for human and civil as well as political rights, was intrinsic to the fabric of the Antiguan and Barbudan society he wanted to construct for the benefit of all generations. He lamented with reason the resort of opposition politicians to lies and illusions as political tools in a naked quest for power. So he wrote, and I quote him once again, they march against the levy to educationally liberate our sons. They storm against hospitals built to heal our wounds. And with remarkable foresight, he noted, yet truth and fact will never be changed, immutable even though we are in the grave. Celeste, 
as your corpse lies in this magnificent casket, the truth and the facts remain ineradicable. It is a sad commentary on our nation's political life that some in opposition refuse to recognize and acknowledge the good that is done, blocking progress not because they fail to see its intrinsic worth, but because they regard it as an obstacle to their own ambition. But we, the people of Antigua and Barbuda, should heed Celeste's voice raised in warning before he died and resonating today to summon us to the angels of our better selves. He wrote, let knowledge and truth before your very eyes guide your hands and soul in life. Let not your hearts be hardened by charlatans whose mission is nothing but to undermine. And I emphasize the word charlatans. Sisters and brothers, one of the greatest tributes that we as a family of Antiguans and Barbudans can pay to Celeste Bird is to reject the culture of deceit, derision, character assassination, and demonization that some are trying to entrench in our society. It is a poison in our body politic that will divide and weaken our nation, defeating our climb up the ladder of economic prosperity and social upliftment on whose rungs Celeste so firmly set our feet. Antigua and Barbuda must resolve to keep on climbing to new heights. As a measure of the open-mindedness and political tolerance of Lester Bird, I recall that for a meeting in London between the United Kingdom and Caracom ministers to discuss education in the Caribbean, he endorsed the late Leonard Tim Hector as one of the principal delegates for Antigua and Barbuda. Celeste well knew and recognized Tim Hector's capacity, knowledge, and experience. Hector at the time edited the outlet newspaper, which was an outspoken critic of the government. But Tim Hector and Lester Bird had a long relationship which while they were on opposite sides of the political fence, did not prohibit their intellectual regard for each other. As history shows, the opposition United Progressive Party, of which Tim Hector was a member at the time of the London meeting, expelled him from the party for attending as a representative of Antigua and Barbuda. That is the difference in leadership between the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party and other political institutions. The ABLT, ABLP remains an all-inclusive, egalitarian institution with a strong philosophical underpinning of people empowerment. Like Celeste, we should continue to acknowledge political partisanship, but must never allow it to be an obstacle to patriotism and collaboration in the national interests. Regrettably, there are many in our society who regard party partisanship as more compelling than national service. Sisters and brothers, in my own personal relationship with Celeste, we have had numerous differences, but always maintained mutual respect and admiration for each other. It is little known, but I reveal it now, that when several members of his cabinet resigned in 2003, intent upon toppling Celeste's administration from within, several approaches were made to me to join that enterprise. I vehemently refused even though my relationship with Celeste at the time was at best lukewarm. I not only refused, but persuaded Longford Jeremy, the then representative for St. Peter, who had resigned, to stand in solidarity with Celeste to restore the ALP majority in the House. He did so, and the enterprise collapsed, though it weakened Celeste's administration. I refused to join that ill-advised venture for two reasons. First, as someone who was and still is firmly committed to the Antiguan Barbie Labour Party, I recognize that it would have done the interests of the Labour Party no good, serving only those who sought to benefit from the government's ruin. And second, I did not join because I did not believe that Celeste Bird deserved such treatment. He had served our nation with distinction in the many ways that I have attempted to describe in this tribute. I said to him at the time that I could not in good conscience denigrate his work and his accomplishments. When I ran against him in 2013 for the contest of the leadership for the Antiguan Barbie Labour Party, it was not because I disrespected him or devalued the magnitude of his contribution. I ran against him for the very reason he himself inscribed in history when he wrote, 
And I quote, part of me knew we had to make room for younger, fresher legs and ideas if the ALB was to continue and thrive. My mind was willing, but my body was no longer able, end of quote. That is why even though I became the leader of the opposition in parliament, I placed Celeste ahead of me in the seating order in the House of Assembly with the designated title of Leader Emeritus. For me, though he had lost the leadership of the party so that we could regroup and rebrand for the future, the importance of his legacy was too great to be diminished and not to be acknowledged. Celeste accepted his defeat with humility and with grace, and I accepted his support with gratitude and respect. He himself made the point in his memoir that when political leadership passes from one generation to another and the contest is divisive, rapid healing must take place. I firmly believe that between Celeste and I, we establish an unprecedented mature method of how changes of leadership should occur in political parties. These leadership transitions should be smooth without acrimony and disharmony, but with cooperation and collaboration, strengthening both the political organization and the country's political and democratic systems to ensure political stability, growth, and development. The Antiguan Barbuda Labor Party and the Antiguan Barbuda people were the stronger for our collaborative approach and maturity in resolving our differences. Celeste Bird was a big man in more ways than one. I was extremely pleased to nominate him as a national hero, and I did so with enthusiasm, resolution, and conviction. He richly deserved the accolade in acknowledgement of the unique and diverse role he played to advance our country at home and abroad. It was a matter of great satisfaction to me that he recorded these words in his memoir. And I quote him once again, I introduced the modern Antiguan Barbuda. I helped to put us on the map. I overcame opposition after being in the seat of control for 10 years and a deputy seat for 18 years before that. I am a national hero. I am content." End of quote. That's right. Sir Lester wrote, I am a national hero. I am content. What better farewell could we want from a hero who gave his earthly being to our national advancement? We know from he himself that he is content. Despite the loss, this should make us all extremely happy, knowing that we gave him his flowers while he was alive, enhancing his enjoyment and contentment in his golden years. So sisters and brothers, we bid Celeste farewell with our hearts full. His story must not be interred with his bones. It must be told to our children and their children as an example of the contentedness that a life of patriotic service brings. Celeste wrote his own epitaph when he said, I do hope that when history visit my life, people will say that I fought a good fight for as long as I could. Farewell, Celeste, farewell. You did indeed fight a good fight, and a grateful nation thanks you most sincerely. Well done, Celeste. Well done. I thank you. The Ministry of the Word. The Old Testament reading, Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. This will be read by His Excellency Sir Rodney Williams, 
Governor General of Antigua and Barbuda. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1, 2, and 3 reading from the New Revised Standard Version, and it reads thus, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bring up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. The word of the Lord. The New Testament reading Revelations. Chapter 21, verses 1 to 7. Revelations 21, 1 to 7. This will be read by Miss Rika Bird, daughter of Sir Lester. The New Testament lesson is written in the book of Revelations, chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. No mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who is seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things and I will be their God, and they will be my children. This is the word of the Lord.
let us all stand for the reading from the gospel according to John chapter 14 verses 1 to 6 and 27. The gospel reading will be read by the very reverend Father George Williams, administrator of the Holy Family Cathedral. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6 and verse 27. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be, where I am going you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. We now invite Reverend Derek Brown, Superintendent of the Methodist Church, to deliver the sermon. To the family, Lady Patricia, daughters, Danielle, Rika, and all of the other siblings, the grandchildren, extended family, friends, colleagues in the various fraternities, local, regional, and international, and all Antiguans and Barbudans, and all who have made this nation their home, their second home and those who have made this their place of business. I extend to you in this your hour of bereavement the condolences of my family and the Methodist Church family here in Antigua and the wider Leeward Islands District Methodist Church family and the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas headquartered here in Antigua. On the death of your loved one, our brother, Sir Lester Bryant Bird, national hero and former Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda. We note that it is only in hours like this when we mourn the death of a loved one a father, a close colleague, friend, advisor, mentor, someone close to us, that we really come to know in fullest measure the consolation of God's promise. Jesus declared in the scriptures, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he may die, yet shall he live. 
And so in the fellowship of this faith, we extend to you a loving hand of sympathy and understanding. We want to assure you of our continued prayerful support during this time of mourning and extending through the grieving process. Our prayer is that God, through his grace, will comfort you in the never-failing, all-supporting arms of Jesus, who is the Christ. We encourage you to trust God to help you to navigate the ups and downs, the turbulence of your grief, to draw your strength from the one of whom the psalmist says, I will lift up mine eyes. Because it is from God that our help comes. This is the same God who watches over you and is attentive and alert to your needs. Today, we join in the celebration for the life of our, our national hero and former Prime Minister, Celeste, who gave his life in service to his country, to his beloved Antigua and Barbuda. And one of the very first things I must make clear to all of us is that Sir Lester, even by his own admission, was not perfect in any way. He had his shortcomings. He made his share of mistakes. Unless any of you here today or any viewing by ABS television, radio, or Facebook page, or any other media or live stream get the impression and start to salivate, hoping that I'm going to mention any specifics, I'm so sorry to disappoint you. Rather, I would note that neither are any of us here perfect or without fault. Everyone of it, me and you, yes you, have our shortcomings and have made our share of mistakes. If you have made mistakes, say amen. I hear some of you, some of you quiet because you all are perfect. But we have all made mistakes. And you know what? This is not the time to point out weaknesses or failures, but how this giant of a man made much of his life and of the gifts God gave to him and the skills he developed and used unselfishly to help others and to build his beloved Antigua and Barbuda. A number of things stands out about Celeste, and you have heard of many over the past few weeks and here today. And different persons have recounted their experience of Celeste. I will not go into detail, but note some of the things that speaks to who Celeste was. And I will begin with scripture. The Old Testament reading from Isaiah 1 to 3 notes that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, anointing me to preach the good news to the poor. And I'm not saying that Celeste was a preacher or a prophet, but perhaps he was chosen for such a time as his, for that season as a lifter upper of his people, building on the legacy and foundation laid by his father, Savisi Bert, that of raising the standards of living of his people and country folk, and those who would come to live in Antigua and Barbuda. The scripture speaks of being anointed to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for prisoners. 
prisoners, yes, of economic slavery, prisoners from deprivation and from colonialism and from the bondage of small mentality taught to us by our colonial masters. You see, coming out of past history, many minds were conditioned to think small. But with the stature of Celesta, small may not have been a word in the vocabulary. But to think small and to think within the, proverb, the our proverbial box was what our past history taught us. To stick to what you know. But being exposed to life beyond and outside of Antigua and to live and experience life in more developed countries as a result of his pursuit of higher education and later on representing Antigua and Barbuda in other countries, afforded Celeste the opportunity to have his eyes opened, not only to what existed in first world countries, but to the possibilities of what could exist in L.A., little Antigua. I mean, he began to dream the impossible dream. Hmm. Maybe for some, but not so impossible for Celeste. For he had the courage to attempt what others may have thought to be impossible. At the least, he tended to surround himself with others who were prepared to catch the vision and run with it. Celeste's drive and determination was to build a new and modern Antigua and Barbuda. His endearing personality and charisma added to his well above average stature along with his other attributes, acumen, and oratorical skills, his athletic ability and his training as a lawyer, attorney, positioned him well and equipped him for such a task and really set him on his way to be a difference maker. The scripture holds true. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Antigans and Barbudas have not perished. As a country, we have made strides. Thanks to Celeste, to Sir V.C. Bird, to others who helped lay the foundation, to those who built and are building on the legacy of Celeste and those who went before and to future leaders of this country. We Antiguans and Barbudans, we are a loving and friendly people. And together, together, together in unity, we will continue to grow and achieve. Together we will build this nation as we continue on the trajectory of growth and future development, advancing the cause and living conditions of all our people. Let us continue to dream with Celeste and turn possibilities into realities. Celeste was a giant of a man when it came not only to his physical stature but in his service to his country. And I hope you don't get tired of hearing that because that was the contribution of the man, a leader who served his people. Athlete, sportsman, knowledgeable, orator, visionary, architect, leader, hard worker, fighter for the downtrodden, lawyer, nation builder, statesman, charismatic, politician, all rounder. These are but some of the words used to describe Celeste and his contribution, which fittingly sums up our national hero. Let me note that Celeste Bryant Burt 
was not only prime minister for the supporters of the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party, but prime minister for the entire nation of Antigua and Barbuda, including supporters of any other parties that existed at that time. Similarly, Sir Lester is not only a national hero for the supporters of the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party, but he is a, um, he's a national hero for the entire nation of Antigua and Barbuda. Let me hear the people agree with me here today. I will hasten to say that Celeste was also a regionalist, one who sought for the integration of the region, noting that we were stronger together. And he spared no efforts in seeking to strengthen ties within the region and fully supported the Caribbean single market and economy, even when others in the region were very much reserved in their support. And sometimes, even to the disgust of some of us of Antiguans, when Celeste seemingly opened the floodgates to many to find refuge in Antigua, to become resident Antiguans, the opening of Antigua and Barbuda to monstrations and to uh, Dominicans and to others during their times of crisis is a kind of hospitality that began with Celeste in leading in regional integration, not only in word or through the signing of a document, but fulfilling various obligations. Because of Celeste, Antigua has been a leader in that regard. Celeste's impact and influence was spread throughout the region. When I served in the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands as Bishop of the Methodist Church, in paying a courtesy call on Prime Minister of the Bahamas, then the Right Honorable Perry Gladstone Christie. And on him learning that I was from Antigua, he was quick to point out that he and Celeste were very good friends, not only colleague politicians, but friends, and how they went back, way back in time to college days, as they both shared the profession as lawyers, and, and, and further, where they were both athletes. And he would have spoken of Celeste's victories and his accomplishments, noting that Celeste was a much better athlete than him. So Perry, I hope you are not listening. One of the things that stood out in the earlier years was that the name Bird was almost synonymous with Antigua. Some referred to it as Bird Country. And that was the impact of the contributions of Sir V.C. Bird, Celeste Bird, and other members of the family in their contribution to the development of Antigua and Barbuda. So persons knew of Antigua and Barbuda, and family members, you should be justly proud for his accomplishments. We know that he was a man who never forgot the common man, and was one who wanted to see the upward movement of his people. As I seek to eulogize Celeste, it is important to note that he grew up in the Methodist Church in Ebenezer as a youngster from Ovals. He grew up and had his foundation in Sunday school and the organizations of the church. Now, truth be told, I'm not sure if he had any choice because his mother was a very staunch Methodist. And although he may not have been as active over the years, he still held on to his Methodist heritage. 
So much so that once, it was noted that once when Sir Lester flew into Antigua, of course flying over St. John's, he was quick to point out to the powers that be in the church at Ebenezer that he observed that there was an issue with the galvanized on Ebenezer's church roof, which needed to be taken care of immediately. He further addressed that matter and ensured that the relevant repairs were done at his expense since he could not allow his church to look the kind of way that it had at the time. I must also point out that Celeste was instrumental in ensuring that the property for the Casada Gardens Methodist Church was granted for the building of a sanctuary and outreach in that community. Now, even though Celeste in his latter years was unable to move about as much as he wanted, he still kept in touch. And through my personal liaison officer as it related to Celeste, Brother Winston Gums, who he would keep me in touch and keep me posted with updates regarding Celeste. Celeste would also send with Gumsy, as I call him, his contributions and his support for the church. The scripture in Isaiah 61 also reminds us as a nation and, as, and his family in particular that the anointing of the Lord also provides comfort to all who mourn. Instead of ashes and mourning and despair, Yes, he says, God will bestow on you a crown of beauty, the oil of gladness, and a garment of praise. As the psalmist declares, weeping may endure for a night. But yes, your night season will come to an end, and joy, your joy will come with the morning. The truth is, even in this time of mourning and grief, as difficult as it is, you can still lift your heads high and give God praise and thanks because Celeste has done well. He has contributed immensely to the development of Antigua and Barbuda. And history will be kind to Celeste, as many have attributed to him the legacy of being the architect of modern Antigua and Barbuda. And I think that having given him his flowers while he was still alive, in making him one of our national heroes, was a befitting honor for one who did so much for Antigua and Barbuda. It is my hope that this has made you proud, family. That it has made you justly proud of his achievements and accomplishments of his contribution to Antigua and Barbuda. And I trust that others will emulate his passion and his desire to see this land of ours develop further into the kind of nation we can become, a leader in the region and beyond, becoming one of the best little countries in the world. Let me say that all, to all of his children and grandchildren, on behalf of Antigua and Barbuda, we say thank you. Thank you for loaning to us, Celeste. As he spent a life of service, seeking to better the lives of others. I am sure he has gone, he was gone much of the time, taking care of the needs of others. And we apologize if in looking after the country, 
you were deprived of some of the time that you coveted and craved. But we pray that the difference he made to this country, to the region and the world was worth it. And that his life will continue to inspire others to do likewise. Revelation 21 gives us words of comfort and assurance that God makes his dwelling with humanity, whom God desires to be his people and God will himself be their God. Where God will comfort them by wiping every tear from their eyes. Which implies that God will make his presence known to them by being close to them. And I don't know about you. But for me, the presence of God is of utmost importance. For without the presence of God, we are unable to come to our full potential. Without God's presence, we will often fail. Without God's presence, we are overcome by the enemy. Without God's presence, we are exposed and we are unprotected. When the writer says that God will wipe every tear from their eyes, it emphasizes the nearness of God. So family, you can be assured that even though God is close to you, and God's presence will comfort you. The writer says, I am Alpha and, and Omega. Not Delta. I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I am God of your earthly beginning, and I am still God in your earthly ending. Begin with God and end with God but also as the scripture encourages that the one who lives and is thirsty, God will give to drink from the spring of the water of life. In other words, drink of God, live in God, and find satisfaction for your souls. Jesus himself said, what does it profit a man to gain the world and yet lose his soul? One of the things that we must take note of in Celeste's death, as in our own death, we can take nothing out of this world. Naked we came, and naked we shall return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. So blessed be the name of the Lord. Even in death, let us praise our God. The greatest impact that we can have is to positively influence the lives of others, offering encouragement and seeking for their brighter future and helping others to be the best that they can be. And many have spoken of the encouragement of Celeste, and I wonder, how about your life? Are you encouraging others? To strive to be the best that they can be? When others have doubts and fears, do you encourage them by saying, yes, you can do it, ensuring that others are encouraged to at least try? I hope that gone are the days when we tell people that they can't because of where they come from and what their name is but recognize that each individual has the potential to achieve and become. We celebrate Celeste Burt, whose life touched and influenced many, gave them the confidence that they can achieve, and made it possible for many to have a higher education through scholarships, etc. A giant, my friends, have fallen in death, as each of us will one day. But the life we live will bear our legacy. What about your death? May the knowledge of your impending death cause you to live and live well knowing that your time on earth may be short, 
but with the time that you have, you can make a difference in the lives of others. Live not just for you, but live for others as well. As neighbors, as brothers and sisters, as Antiguans and Barbudans, let us live beyond politics. Let us live with a love that embraces each endeavoring, all achieving. Let us stand together, for together we will accomplish much. In election season, we campaign and we vote our conscience. And we support whichever party we choose to, but when it is all done and a government is appointed, then the government represents us all and we give our support until the next election season. So Lester played his part, and he played it well. He fought a good fight, and he finished his race. Now he rests from his labors. So long, former prime minister, so long, national hero. So long, Sir Lester Bryant Burt. Make his legacy and memory live on for generations. And let it be recorded in history. Let it be taught to our children and our children's children. And make his soul rest in eternal peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please stand with me and let us affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with the prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Praise be to you, O God, our Father, who created us in your own image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, our Lord and our God, who have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers and are now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. Praise and blessings be to you, O Holy Spirit, God our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. And together we say, all praise and glory, blessings and honor, thanksgiving and worship be to you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We bless your name for the life of Sir Lester, whom we today lay to rest. 
We give you thanks for the joy and the blessing his life has brought to others and his service to his generation according to your will and for every happy remembrance of his life. We bless you for your mercy and goodness which have followed him all the days of his life, that now the trials of this world are over and death itself is past. Receive him into your perfect kingdom and bring us with all who have lived and served you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the faithful will be led by the very Reverend Father George Williams and the family of Sir Lester, Kieran Bird, Janelle Bird Gardner, Rena Bird, daughters of Sir Lester, and Amelia Bird, niece of Sir Lester. Let us pray. Jesus Christ is risen, the firstborn of the dead. With confidence in the salvation he brings, we now confidently offer our prayers. The response to which petition is, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for Sir Lester. In baptism, he died with Christ. May he now share in fullness of his resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God is full of mercy and compassion. May he forgive Sir Lester any sins he committed through human frailty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sorrowing family, our relatives, and friends of Sir Lester, that we may all find strength and consolation in our Christian faith and in the love and support of this nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all consolation, help us to comfort one another in our grief, finding light in time. We pray for all those we have loved who have died, especially Sir Vere Cornwall Bird Sr., Lady Lydia Bird, Vere Cornwall Bird Jr., and Roswell Bird. Lord, give them reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who care for the sick and dying especially those who cared for Sir Lester. Rayfield, Anthony, Alliston, and Peter. Dr. Joseph John, Dr. Jason Belazaire, Dr. Serena St. Luce, nurses Deborah, Giselle, Murnett, Stacy, Sister Sonia Peterson, and the nurses of Medical Surgical Associates, and all of the other medical support staff who were there for him during his time of illness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parents who grieve over the death of their children, that they may be comforted in the knowledge that they rest in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those here today that our memory of Sir Lester, whom we loved, inspires us with a renewed love for all our brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of us here today and for all the members of our family that we may be prepared for the hour of our own death when God will call us by name to pass from this world to the next. We pray that those who are burdened by loss may be blessed with courage, strength, and patience. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation, Antigua and Barbuda. Give our leaders wisdom that they may be able to do things beyond their understanding. Help them to choose the right path when making decisions on behalf of this nation. Give the Governor General, Prime Minister, Leader of the Opposition, Members of Parliament, the Judiciaries, and other in authority 
grace and courage to make the sound decision that aligns with your will for this beloved nation of ours. Praise to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for calm and for peace. The earth and everything, it belongs to you. We are only but stewards of this thing that you have granted us, including this nation. Lord Almighty, let there be calmness in this nation. Sudden terrors are causing us to be filled with anxiety. Lord, help us to focus our gaze on your son, Jesus, and not on what is happening all around us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us conclude. Lord God of justice and mercy, hear our prayers. Give our beloved dead the reward of their labors and grant us your consolation in our loss. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us all stand for the commendation. Eternal God, you have made us all and hate nothing that you have made and have given your son for our redemption, we commend our brother Lester Bryant to your perfect mercy and wisdom. Eternal rest grant unto him, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Amen. We're now going to remain standing as we sing the Lord's Prayer. Not singing it again? <laughs> Let us say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good thing to do his will working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We we'll now sing the national anthem.
share the, the sessional hymn, Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring.
at the recessional hymn, Lift Every Voice and Sing. And now it is time for the coffin to be lifted by the bearer party consisting of eight bearers. And that's the significant difference now visually with a state funeral because it's going to be a gun carriage that is carrying the body uh, of Celeste Brown Bird. Of course, the coffin uh, will be placed on a gun carriage. And essentially, as I said, that's the real difference. Uh, it, I mean, in, in previous times, you would have had a horse-drawn uh, gun carriage. Now, of course, modern times, you have essentially not a, a horse-drawn, but a horse-power-driven uh, gun carriage. So uh, certainly, that, that's the visual difference in terms of uh, the, uh, what's taking place here. So for the listeners on radio, and of course, it's a simulcast all across the radio land, what's taking place now is that uh, the bear party consisting of uh, eight members of the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force carefully, slowly marching with the coffin, the flag draped coffin of Celeste Brian Bird to go towards the gun carriage. And they will be flanked, they will actually uh, be walking uh, through uh, a rank of officers of the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force. So uh, it is a powerful imagery that we're looking at and such solemn, dignified occasion. Um, as I said, essentially the hallmark of a state funeral, which is to say a solemn, dignified, majestic farewell to an individual who would have served his country with distinction and with honor. So it is um, absolutely fantastic what we're seeing. would be reminiscent of the closeness of these individuals, apart from, of course, family. But, for example, Dr. John and Dr. Belazir uh, would be individuals who would have worked very closely alongside providing medical care and medical support uh, to Celeste Bryant Bird. And so this is a, a really powerful imagery as we see the very slow, solemn walk and march by the Bearer Party. Um, of course, trailed by members of the family and uh, other very, very close family friends. And uh, uh, ahead of that, uh, ahead of the coffin, of course, members of the clergy would have officiated this funeral. And uh, now the coffin bearing Celesta will be placed onto the gun carriage for a very slow, majestic procession towards the inside of his last resting place, his final resting place, which is the St. John's Public Cemetery. This is a very quick indication in terms of the bearer party. Uh, just a little bit of background. This normally consists of an officer, warrant officer, or a senior non-commissioned officer in charge. It's normally six to eight uh, bearers, depending on the size of the coffin. And of course, Celeste Brand Bird was a giant of a man physically and uh, metaphorically. So obviously, it's the higher end of that. So eight bearers. And there are two reserve bearers and two hat orderlies. So two hat orderlies plus, of course, uh, the officer who is bearing the insignia of Celeste Brown Bird, who had this country's highest honor of being a national hero, in addition to being former prime minister and former deputy prime minister as well. The, in terms of the firing party, which uh, uh, will, will, of course, uh, also be in tow as a non-commissioned officer. One Corporal 
12 junior ranks, one bugler or piper if necessary. Uh, that's the look at the uh, firing party. So the beer party, that's where the focus is now. And they have very clear instructions. Yes, they have very, very clear, very clear instructions now in relation to, um, in, in terms of how to use, in terms of how to proceed uh, going forward. And just to indicate, in terms of the lifting, what we have seen earlier, uh, on the command, prepare to lift, the bearers are to place both hands, fingers together under the coffin, the thumbs running vertically up the side. Now, shoulder width apart, ensuring that the national flag is between the hands and the coffin. So very clear instructions. All these are I mean, protocols to the T. Very clear, precise, clinical protocols. That's what you would expect with military precision because the state funeral is really uh, the, at the tip of the sphere would be the defense force. And that's why the gun carriage comes in also. Yeah, pomp, the pomp and ceremony of this, of course, far outweighing any official funeral that we've officiated at so far, uh, of broad coverage of uh, Garfield. Um, the precision that you've spoken of, uh, the way the Defence Force have methodically uh, carried the, the coffin, uh, the way it's now being tethered, um, it's all a sight just to behold. I mean, if, if you are not watching it, only hearing, we're trying our best to describe it for you. Uh, but it is a real sight to behold. It's now been placed on the carriage. Uh, it's being tethered as we speak, as it will be drawn throughout the streets on its way to the final resting place. Indeed. Uh, and of course, uh, now what's happening is, of course, it's being placed securely and safely onto the gun carriage uh, to be taken to the St. John's Public Cemetery. It's, it will be carried, of course, the gun carriage uh, will be, uh, will be uh, pretty much uh, at, the, at the head of that is uh, one of the vehicles. It looks like a very like a brand new vehicle of the Defence Force, making sure that there can be no problems with that vehicle at all. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, making sure that all is in place for the safe uh, arrival of the coffin bearing the body of Celeste Bryant Bird at the site of interment, which is the St. John's Public Cemetery. Uh, and of course, uh, there you're looking at uh, uh, soldiers, who, some of whom would have been part of the sentry group earlier. And now uh, they pr pretty much formed a flank through which uh, the coffin bearing Celeste Bryant Bird uh, was taken uh, to that gun carriage. They are outriders and essentially you're looking at most of the party now. So the outriders, the gun carriage is pretty much about to start moving off and uh, the outriders starting to slowly uh, go off here and leaving the grounds of the Servivian Richards Stadium uh, with the body of uh, Celeste Bryant Bird on the gun carriage. Flank, uh, f uh, 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 draped in the flag, f flag of Antigua and Barbuda with the bearer party marching beside it, flanking the coffin of Celeste Brown Bird. A majestic image and a majestic day. Great weather conditions. And I think that, as I said, we couldn't have asked for anything more in terms of the weather. Great cooling breeze. Rather hot, but not humid. There was a great cooling breeze across, and I think it was it, it has gone magnificently so far in terms of the occasion. Uh, impeccable weather, uh, immaculate sunshine, Garfield. We're seeing the the uh, bearers, of course, on carriage. Those honorary Paul bearers, those very close friends, are now making their way off the ground. Um, as we see much of the crowd that has been gathered here today, uh, the congregation, of course, dispersing right now. Um, but it, as you said, Garfield, we'll be making its way down to the, the public cemetery. We're happy to be able to bring you, of course, from ABS across all uh, radio and television platforms across this country and farther afield uh, live coverage. Uh, I will be rushing off very shortly to, to continue our coverage from the St. John's Public Cemetery, where the final interment will be. Uh, but we'll, of course, have a team that follows the, the procession all the way down into St. John's. Uh, Garfield, you'll be wrapping up here as well, will you not? Yes, uh, and our thanks, Ursula, for, uh, as I said, uh, providing expert analysis of what's been taking place here today. Uh, it, it is a really solemn occasion, a grandiose occasion, a majestic and nothing else would suffice to honor the legacy uh, of the distinctive contribution, the extraordinary contribution of Celeste Bryant Bird to national development, to the development of so many people across this country. Uh, but both in terms, I mean, personally touching the lives of so many people with his extraordinarily, extraordinary magnanimity, and also uh, with, with his strength of spirit and his character, and also, of course, touching the lives of so many people with his transformative projects and his transformative uh, vision because he's been seen as a visionary leader, uh, certainly complemented as that. And notwithstanding political persuasions, 
I think there can be no doubt that he has made uh, a, a fantastic contribution, a magnificent contribution to the country, which will long uh, last and will be f around for posterity to come, for generations to come. Uh, and certainly, uh, we, we look forward to what, the last phase of these proceedings, which will be uh, the, the interment at the St. John's Public Cemetery. Yes, indeed, uh, Agafi. When we talk about his immense contribution, we're talking about to uh, not only his constituents, but we're talking about to members of the Antigua Barbados Labour Party, members of the judiciary, the legal fraternity, uh, members outside Antigua Barbados, the, the Caribbean community as well. He would have touched those lives as well with his integrationist approach. Uh, and so um, I'm so happy to see that there were people from dignitaries from outside Antigua Barbados who could come today to pay their last respects uh, and to represent the various organizations. Uh, we talk about the OAS, we're talking about uh, the Barbados Embassy. And so we're just happy that they were able to join with us as we're able. Right, you're asking you to just uh, get rid of uh, your mic. Yes, 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 indeed, right. So we're just happy that um, those people outside Antigua he was able to touch uh, have been able to come to make representation. I've seen uh, some people who don't reside in Antigua. They've flown in specifically for the funeral today. That's testament to the, to the way the immense uh, impact he's had on the lives of Antiguans and Barbudans, whether here or in the wider diaspora. Absolutely, indeed. And of course, Ursula, just before you go, because you're getting ready to head on to the final uh, leg of the state funeral, which is, of course, uh, the, the interment at the St. John's Public Cemetery. This is where, even more than what we've seen so far, this is where we will see perhaps the greatest manifestations of the state funeral. The most quintessential uh, elements of a state funeral will have a 19-gun salute. We will have, of course, the fact that the gun carriage is taking uh, the body. What morning would not have taken into account the gun carriage. The first time the gun carriage would be used at this point because previously it would have been the hearse taking uh, the body of Celeste from the funeral home to the parliament building for the lying in state this morning. But now taking him to his final resting place, it's the gun carriage with full honours, full military honours. And uh, that is uh, where members of the public, uh, those who would have perhaps lined the, the route to the St. John's Public Cemetery to catch a glimpse of the flag draped coffin of Celeste Brant Bird. This is where they will see, uh, as I said, all the trappings uh, and all the pump. So they'll, they'll hear the uh, 19 booms, the 19 explosions from the gun salute, 19 gun salute. And of course, uh, they will catch a glimpse of the, the coffin as it's being drawn by the gun carriage. Final comments, Ursula, before you rush on to the St. John's Public Cemetery. Uh, it's, it's been a really brilliant day, not only the sunshine. Uh, even racing up here this morning, we were seeing people already start to line the route to show their respect. Um, the body laid state this morning, and we were happy to see those dignitaries come through. The family got a chance to pay their final respect. In, in some final private moments with Celesta, of course, all the speakers today, including members of the opposition, speaking very glowingly of Celesta's contribution to, to national development, to re the regional development as well. Um, I think it's been a brilliant day. I think uh, the family can be pleased that the, the nation put on a state funeral that was befitting of the, the life and times of Celesta. And as we go on to the tournament now, I suspect that there will be others who will line the streets as well as we make our way down. As you said, coming up, they were only able to see the hearse, not able to see the, the flag draped uh, uh, coffin, but they will be able to see the coffin now going down. Uh, and so we're expecting that we'll see some others who would have been joining our commentary now knowing that the, the coffin is being uh, taken through the streets, will be lining just to get a closer look. So we're, we're happy to be been able to bring live coverage, of course, to all our viewers or listeners uh, in Antigua Barbuda and across the world. And um, we'll be happy to bring uh, commentary from the final place of interment a little later. Indeed. Ursula, thank you so much. I look forward to joining you in a very short time at the public cemetery. So uh, there you have it from this leg of our broadcast, of course, which would be uh, the, uh, the state funeral itself in terms of the service. We would have had tributes in song and in word. We would have had uh, powerful words of faith and comfort for the, for the family. And of course, we would have had the commendation of uh, his uh, body. And uh, certainly uh, there is uh, the grand hope that the nation will continue to be inspired and continue to be strengthened by the extraordinary work that Celeste Brandt Bird would have put in. He's certainly run his race and he's certainly now uh, resting well. All right, well, until you join us again, we'll be, you'll be joining us next at the St. John's Public Cemetery for the final uh, leg of this state funeral as the gun carriage slowly makes its way out of the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium with the uh, body of the late former Prime Minister and national hero Celeste Brandt Bird taking it all, taking his body all the way. Uh, to the St. John's Public Cemetery, where there will only be members of his family 
and dignitaries will be inside uh, the facility, inside the St. John's Public Cemetery because, of course, of the need to maintain social distancing, physical distancing, maintaining the protocols. And by the way, all the protocols would have been enforced here. All the chairs, uh, there, there, there's... Uh, alternate seating so that each chair, the next one is marked uh, as, 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 as an off limit. So in, uh, two people can't sit uh, side by side on these chairs, ensuring that physical distancing is maintained. So the party, uh, the beer party, uh, the gun carriage on its way to the public cemetery will be there as well. Until you join us then, stay with us right here on ABS and all our platforms. Just outside the Surviv Stadium, there we have the vehicle towing the gun carriage on which the casket of Celeste rests. The procession, in a few short moments, will be making its way down to the St. John's Public Cemetery, where an interment will take place. Earlier today, we heard many glowing tributes honoring the life and the legacy of Sir Lester in a state funeral that was befitting of his legacy and contribution to the development of Antigua and Barbuda. We're just awaiting the procession to move off again on its way to the St. John's Public Cemetery. Just about getting ready for the procession into the public cemetery.
members of the police band there bearing a variety of instruments preparing for the various selections which they would render as the procession heads into the public cemetery. Once again, you're watching live coverage, wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the state funeral for Celeste, former Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda and national hero. Now we're seeing images from the Sir Vivian Richards Cricket Stadium with a state funeral just wrapped up. We have the military vehicle towing the gun carriage bearing the casket of Celeste. In a few short moments, the casket being escorted by the police will make its way onto Cross Street where the procession would head into the public cemetery.
dignified occasion, a state funeral for Celeste Ryan Byrne. Again, we're seeing images of the military vehicle bearing the gun carriage which bears the casket of Celeste, making its way from the stadium now towards Cross Street in a few short moments and then into the public cemetery for interment. We'll continue to bring you live coverage, coverage and images of the procession.
leaving the stadium on its way to the public cemetery for interment. We see members of the public turning out on the sides of the streets to pay their final respects to Celeste.
members of the public turning out to pay their final respects to Celeste as the procession still on Sir Sidney Collins Highway makes its way down to the public cemetery. Just a few short moments, the procession will arrive on Cross Street where they'll assemble for the final journey to the public cemetery. And there we see another shot of members of the Defense Force assembled already on Cross Street awaiting the arrival of Celeste's casket. From there, the final journey to the public cemetery. Celeste's casket now passing the Heroes Park where a monument will be erected in his honor at a later date. And again Antigans and Barbudans and perhaps citizens of the region turning out on the streets pay their final respects to Celeste.
The procession has now made a right onto Sir George Walter Highway. Where we anticipate they will make a left onto Old Palm Road. very solemn journey for the family and members of this procession as they make a left onto the Old Palm Road on their way to the public cemetery. Of course, the procession will join the military parade 
on Cross Street for the final journey to the public cemetery. Indeed, all of Antigua mourns the loss of an icon, a national hero.
Of course, this area forms part of the rural East constituency, which Sir Leicester represented in the House of Parliament for many years. Hence, we're seeing an increased number of individuals lining the streets to pay their final respects to their former member of parliament, Celeste. Celeste's former constituents lining the sides of the streets of the rural east constituency. And there, the procession just passing the St. Johnson's Village Sports Complex, which Sir Lester was also instrumental in erecting. There, you're seeing the famous Clear Hall Triangle, the venue for many public meetings in the Rural East constituency by Celeste and the Antigua Labour Party. Now we're seeing more of his constituents turning out again to pay their final respects. as Celeste makes his final journey through the rural East constituency. The constituency which he represented for many years in the House of Parliament.
procession now making its way past the newly erected Antigua Labour Party headquarters over to the right. There you're seeing live images of members of the Defense Force assembled on Cross Street. The gun carriage bearing the casket of Celeste now just moments away join in the members of the military assembled here on Cross Street. And there you're seeing on your screens the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force military band. Shortly, the parade will march off in a slow march on their way to the St. John's Public Cemetery. Celeste now arriving on 
cross street where it will join the armed party and the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force military band. Shortly the armed party will reverse arms And there you have it, the armed party have now reversed arms. There you have it, you're looking at live images on Cross Street, just ahead of Celeste's final journey to the public cemetery. And the command has been given for a parade a slow march. This slow march will continue into the public cemetery.
the St. St. John's Public Cemetery. As you can see behind us, we are now awaiting the arrival of the cortege bearing the remains of Sylvester Bryant. Brother Emerson, as you know, going by Garfield Burford. Yes, indeed, Ursula. Thank you so much uh, for great to be back with you again, and thanks so much to our listeners and our viewers online and on air for staying with us here. So we've gone about six of the nineteen, uh, of six of the nineteen explosions. Yeah, this is the nineteen gun salute, and of course the first one uh, caused quite a stir here. Obviously, I, I, re I literally saw everybody jump, and uh, I, I think included. Uh, yes, <laughs> I think uh, it, it was a bit of a jolt, and of course we've gone six or thirty. Your understanding is that the last one will go up just as the just uh, as gun carriage comes precise. into uh, the area here. So that's the seventh that, one yeah, gone, indeed. seven of 19. And of course, you're hearing the uh, intermittent explosions at timed at very precise intervals. Of course, this is a military precision. Uh, this is marked by mili military precision. Uh, of course, the gun carriage is now on its way here. Just look behind us and you see just the majestic picture of uh, uh, the the full pomp and ceremony of a state funeral with all of the accoutrements attached to that as well. Now we've gone number, number eight, eight for mm -hmm. the 19 gun salute. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a fitting way for Celeste Bird to uh, be, 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 be interred and for the nation to say farewell to such a re remarkable individual, remarkable leader, remarkable visionary, uh, someone who would have contributed so much to national development. All right, we're going to just to go to our left here, yes, uh, just to get a better view as to the position coming Absolutely. up the street. Uh, as you, you right where you said, uh, Garfield, uh, I send out to fitting the great man. That's number nine in terms of number 19, 19 gun salute. Uh, a small crowd we see gathered here on Friday Road. Lots of people just willing to, to witness the final farewell, say a final goodbye to Celeste. Of course, only family ambassadors, uh, a certain of the dignitaries allowed inside the St. John's Public Cemetery. We've seen members of the St. John's Rural East constituency gathered out here with their flags. We see representation, the principal and students of the Antigua Grammar School as well, gathered here all in an effort to say goodbye to Celeste. Absolutely. And uh, in terms of uh, what you see in terms of the procession, uh, procession that's 11 now for the 19-gun salute. Uh, so ahead will be the Outriders. They just passed us a while ago. Then there's a firing party. That's the firing party just passed a while ago. And the Antigua and Barbuda Defense Force coming defense force band right behind us then the gun carriage carrying the coffin with the late national hero and former prime minister celeste bryant bird then the bearers and paul bearers the bearer party as we said to you earlier when we were at the Cerevian richard stadium consisting of eight individuals eight members of the antigua barbuda defense force they were uh, also reserved as well uh, and so uh it, it can be to eight six to eight uh, depending on the size of the coffin and of course eight uh, being used the the maximum number for this one then afterwards family members owner in governor general prime minister of the opposition and staff national police family ems and the hearse right, uh, right passing now is the antigua defense force uh, So there you go. Uh, so uh, 
as I said, the procession, uh, main of efforts to send the Alvarado firing party, parade commander, and Tigre Barbuda Defense Force Band. We just had to add a spot for our audience to hear. Uh, and, uh, the, uh, this is the, well, the 14th now. Indeed. I think I might have lost count. But, uh, That's all right, to be honest. To come. Uh, the gun carriage you just saw uh, passing us here, the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force. The gun carriage, of course, is a distinctive, quintessential um, element of uh, a state, a state funeral. funeral. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what differentiates it, for, for example, from, let's say, a ceremonial funeral or an official funeral. The fact that the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force really takes control uh, and it's marked by the military precision and the clinical preparedness uh, and preparations for that. Yes, indeed. Uh, and now we're seeing, of course, members of the Royal Police Force of Antigua Barbuda just passing us. Members of Antigua Barbuda Fire Brigade as well, now walking past. Of course, they're going to the main gate of the St. John, St. John's Public Cemetery. Um, and as I said, Godfrey, lots of, lots of uh, <laughs> gathered around outside here to pay their final respects. Only on the inside, of course, we found the members of the uh, special voters, guests, the detainees, the cabinet, etc. That we gathered on the inside to say our final farewell. What a program that's planned for the inside as well. Apart from the, the very good singing that we will, of course, uh, hear in, in a while, of course, hoping to be led by the National Youth Choir of Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, when the cottage gets inside, we will have the removal of, removal of the flag uh, and then the presentation thereof. The last post, one minute silence, uh, then the reveille, of course, and then final compliments offered by the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force. Um, and then we'll have the wreath laying ceremony, of course, that will follow protocol as well. Uh, of course, the wreath as well as the courtesy brother of the deceased, and then the Governor General will lay his to be followed by the Prime Minister. There we go. Uh, so we'll continue to hear more of the, uh, the gun salute. I think that might be now number 15 or 15 16. 15 or 16, indeed. So just a few more you know, in terms of the gun salute. Uh, I think the initial fright has disappeared. Uh, certainly the first one was a bit of a jolt. <laughs> and I think that the, uh, the, 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 the music that was being played by, of course, the Antigua Barbuda Def Defense Force band would have, in a way, diluted some of the effect <laughs> of the gun salute. So I think that some individuals would have gotten a little bit more accustomed uh, to it uh, this, uh, this afternoon. Of course, yeah, if you're just joining us, a warm welcome to our coverage right here on ABS Television, ABS Online, and as well as ABS Radio. We thank all of the listeners on the, uh, the stations right across the country for joining us for this broadcast. Of course, it's uh, simulcast on Observer Radio, on Progressive, on Caribbean Radio Lighthouse, Nice FM, and all the other stations which have joined us for this broadcast. We really appreciate uh, your company. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're getting ready now for the final leg of this uh, state funeral, which is, of course, the interment of Celesta. And just to our left is where uh, the uh, tomb is. And, he, of course, he will be, uh, the, the coffin will be placed there in a very, very short time as well. Uh, so this element, this segment of the proceedings will be marked significantly uh, by more of the pomp and ceremony that accords, that comes with a state funeral, including a minute's silence, uh, the revale, and so on. So all of that will be, uh, will be evident. We're still expecting to hear a few more explosions as well uh, because the gun salute has a few more to go. So we're still expecting, for example, about uh, three more explosions. It's a 19-gun salute here, 19-gun salute. We've had great weather, just a few, just uh, some uh, clouds in the sky, absolutely no threat of rain. Uh, sweltering heat at some points, but still, thankfully, a cooling breeze as well to uh, go along with uh, the, 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 the very hot conditions here. Yes, we, we don't have the elevation we, we had the good fortune of at the, the stadium, so it's a little hotter down here on the ground. Uh, but let's just tell our viewers and, and our listeners as well, Garfi, that we, had, had rep we have had representation from Caribbean Brethren in terms of sending dignitaries to attend the state funeral this afternoon. If we could just go through uh, some of them that we have here. Uh, because we've got representation from Barbados in the person of the Honorable Wilfred Abrams. Uh, he's the Minister for Home Affairs, Information and Public Affairs. And from Dominique, we've had the Honorable Reginald Osh and the Honorable Edward Regist. So we've got both of those from Dominica. Uh, in terms of the U.S. representation, U.S. Ambassador Linda Tagliatella is here. And of course, the Minister for the Caribbean Ambassador from Venezuela, Raul Lee Kausi. Absolutely. And uh, there we are having Prime Minister Arnold Gaston Brown um, being greeted by uh, very, rapturous very applause. rapturous applause as he and his wife, uh, uh, Minister Maria Brown, make their way into the proceedings here. 
they're being uh, really uh, given great greetings, very vociferous greetings here as well. Uh, we also have Flagman in the in, in the building as well, in, in the, uh, the cemetery as well. Yeah. By the way, he had stood right throughout the entire proceedings, Indeed. stoically, mm -hmm. yes. and uh, making sure that notwithstanding the conditions, notwithstanding the heat and so on, he was in a position to uh, represent uh, the country and to, uh, he, he, he's just been an extraordinary figure when it comes down to that. Indeed. All right, we're seeing some more dignitaries come through. Senator Mary Claire Hurst, of course, uh, leader of government business in the Senate, uh, Minister of State within the Ministry of Tourism and Economic Development, of course, Chairman of the Antigua Port, is Port Authority as well. The Senator Gail Christian as well, making her way inside this afternoon. Indeed, and uh, so we're almost at the start of this final leg of the proceedings here. As I said, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult to maintain the kind of physical distancing I'm sure that the authorities would have wanted their best I think but uh, it's not going to be a perfect situation in relation to uh, physical distancing but uh, at, the, at this point I think the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force Band ready of course to Indeed. ensure that they are able to do the Rivale and the other elements of the uh, program here let's not also tell you that in addition to the Rivale there will be the, a minute's silence the last post as well those are very very solemn uh, just amplifying the solemnity of the occasion here as well. There will be final compliments as we're looking at uh, Chief of Defence Staff as the uh, as Police Commissioner. Uh, both will be their way to, the, uh, uh, to, to under the tent where the dignitaries are located as well. So uh, pretty much all set and all in place for the final leg, the interment of uh, the late Celeste Brandburn. Indeed. All right. So as you said, uh, Commissioner of Police Atley Rodney uh, making his way Chief of Defence Staff uh, Honorable Talbert Benjamin, just making their way on, speaking to Chief Political Officer. We see entering as well the Minister for Education, Sport and Creative Industries, Honorable Darren Matthew, and the Minister for uh, Foreign Affairs, Trade and Immigration, the Honorable E.P. Chet Green as well. So the leader of the opposition, we've got the Honorable Jamal Pringle making his way inside as well. Indeed. So uh, pretty much uh, we're now looking at the point at which uh, the gun carriage is pretty much just next to us. Mm -hmm. It is going to, of course, the stop at a position where uh, it will be lifted off very carefully, very methodically, lifted off uh, the gun carriage. So uh, they are being indicated, I think the driver of the vehicle just being asked to hold a second at this point uh, because, uh, because at that point, it's this point where they will have the gun carriage removed, sorry, the coffin removed, removed from, the gun, from the gun carriage. Indeed. As you say, it's been very securely uh, tethered. Gun I think the straps will come off momentarily and then uh, the Antigua Barbary Defense Force uh, will lift the coffin, hoist it from uh, its resting place currently and move it onto the tent um, to the tomb where, of course, we'll have the final interment next to his mother as he so, he so wanted. Absolutely. And uh, the bearer party uh, will, of course, be making sure that uh, they have all in place for, I think the vehicle is reversing a little bit to just make sure that they can s safely yes. remove the coffin from the gun carriage. Uh, we're seeing Dr. Joseph Joy John right mm -hmm. in front of us here. Mm -hmm. He would have been part of uh, the uh, party walking behind the gun carriage as well. Very, very close to the family. The family was uh, very, very grateful for his assistance. Of course, he would have, he said when we interviewed him, that this was, in addition to being the f physician for Celesta, it was very, very close to the family as well. He saw it as his duty. He saw it as almost a privilege to be able to render that level of assistance to Celesta. Mm -hmm. And uh, the family extremely grateful for the assistance that he's been able to f provide, as well as, of course, uh, Dr. Jason Dallas here, uh, other members of the medical team, the nurses who would have given close assistance as well, Sir Robin Yearwood, uh, the, uh, and, and, and uh, other members of the team. We're just looking at uh, family uh, some members. of the family members, including, uh, of course, the eldest of Celesta's children, who is uh, Daniel Bird, mm -hmm. uh, making their way under the tent at this point. They will of course, taking their seats uh, under the tent as we're getting ready for the start of the proceedings here. The gun, the coffin will be released or removed from the gun carriage very carefully and of course uh, with all the military precision will be taken uh, to the site of the interment. All right. Yes, indeed, uh, Garfield, we've seen family members. As you said, his daughters would have made their way past us to be seated uh, on the tent. Uh, seeing the brother, Curtis Bird, standing just not too far from us here as well um, as we're making final preparations and making sure that there is enough space 
tool that um, those members of the Antigua Defense Force are able to safely make their way onto the tent. All right, uh, it's, I think it's gotten a little bit more crowded where we are because as everybody just makes sure that they're in a position where they can see a kind of front row yes, seat uh, for having a great advantage point. It's a little bit, uh, of course, and that's why there is a need for, of course, a new uh, cemetery, a new national cemetery, because uh, that's what the environment minister has been working towards. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this one is not as spacious as it uh, could have been. So obviously, everybody trying to make sure that they get the best position, mm -hmm. the best seat in the house, well, the Indeed. standing room in the house, to be able to ob observe the proceedings here as well. All right. So the, the coffin now being removed from the gun carriage, uh, from what we can see here. As you said, Gaffi, it's very difficult now to see everything with a number of uh, people who are directly in our line of vision. But we, um, yes, so the coffin now being removed from the gun carriage. Very carefully, as you said, uh, Gaffi, mm. making sure that there are no mishaps here this afternoon. And then, of course, there's, there's enough space now made, I think, that they can s make their way safely through and onto the tent to the final resting place. Indeed, and a gun carriage that is in almost in pristine condition. Indeed. Uh, as is the vehicle taking it, uh, taking the gun as well. So mm -hmm. now, safely, the members of the Deer Party have mounted the coffin of the left side. Into their shoulders. Very clear. Uh, and th this area would have already been prepared, the path. Shoes shined to well the polished. Hilt. Right. Polished and shined to the hilt. And as if on cue, a very a very cool breeze just passed through here, uh, Garfield. Yes. Uh, just cooling the area down a bit, as we see, of course. So, very carefully, of course, we see them making their way now. So on the plant will be removed uh, as we get ready for internment. But that will be after, of course, the Rivali, the, the, the last post. Actually, it will uh, be before, actually. Yes. So the removal of the flag, and then we'll have the presentation of the flag, uh, most likely to the to widow. The, that's correct, the lady, lady Patricia Bird. Bird. That's right. And then the last post, the one minute. Compliments, order, uh, and then of course, the replaying will be significant. A number of individuals will be laying wreaths. Precisely. The yes. Bird, the widow of uh, Celeste, uh, Curtis Bird, uh, Governor General Brown Brown Williams, Honorable Prime Minister Jefferson Brown, visiting heads of state and government, President of the Senate, Senator Williams Grant, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mr. Gerald Black. You see. As uh, we look at the gates being, uh, it looks as if they'll be, uh, they'll they'll be closing. Uh, yes. Closing. Uh, of course, we have a leader of the opposition who will be laying wreaths. How early it Indeed. Mm -hmm. At our broadcast point, St. Brown, who is a wife of Prime Minister Brown. The Chancery of the Orders and Declarations of Antigua and Barbuda, the family, Antigua Barbuda Labour Party, the trades and labor, Antigua Trades and Labour Union, which is the oldest trade union in the country, mm -hmm. all the mourners and members of the general public uh, who might want to also get the opportunity to lay wreaths here as well. I think the chief protocol officer has arranged that if you have a wreath and you're on the outside, you're of course not permitted to be inside. They've taken them and they, they're now waiting on the inside to be placed officially. So we don't have the, just to avoid our having the number of persons that we're trying to avoid having inside. They've taken those wreaths in advance so that they're here now waiting to be placed after an extremely long list of other wreath layers. Absolutely. Yes. And, and uh, members of the public also trying to, on the outside, jostle for positions where they can also get a good vantage point to be able to see. Uh, some of them uh, have a difficulty actually seeing above uh, members of the security forces mm. who are pretty much lined the perimeter on the Cambridge Rock Cemetery. On the southern uh, side, uh, yes. And, and some individuals have actually had a very good vantage point. They were actually looking from uh, the house, uh, which is a <laughs> two-story house, just across, across from the public yes, cemetery. Right. So they have yes. perhaps the best mm -hmm. standing room in the house to be able to see what's happening. Individuals coming out, coming out of the gallery to be able to look at the proceedings here. Mm -hmm. I think it's a fantastic uh, day here to be able to see what's happening. Indeed, we've had some uh, musical uh, prelude as well. Uh, music you're hearing now is from uh, Sir Wilfred Jacobs playing on keyboard. And he, of course, will accompany 
um, much of the singing that will take place. Pity we can't get any closer, uh, Garfield, to hopefully our cameras are closer than we are, be able to get um, a first hand view as to the, the, uh, the placing of the, the, the coffin on the bands that will then prepare for interment. Indeed, and I think that uh, I think that what I'm seeing here is uh, it's a little crowded over the tent at this it point. Uh, it's so much so that uh, it has blocked our vision. We can't even see at but all. But family and dignity. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. They're the only ones who are yes, allowed under the, the tent at this point. Everybody else on the outskirts of the tent. So warm sunshine here at St. John's Public Cemetery. In case you're just joining us, we've been here, well not here on this side, we've been bringing you all day since 6 a.m. this morning. Uh, we had uh, precursor coverage and we've had live coverage of uh, Celeste Birds lying in state this morning at the Parliament building. Private viewing for family members and, and other dignitaries. That includes visiting dignitaries from uh, the region and farther afield. And then we were at the Civil Mission Stadium for the, the state funeral of Celeste. And now we're at St. John's Public Cemetery for final interment. Of course, if you're wondering, he's a national hero, yes, and there will be uh, a monument of sorts made in his honor that will be placed inside the National Heroes Park sometime later. But as it was his wish to be buried here at the St. John's Public Cemetery, that is being honored this afternoon. Very, very good. As we, as we mentioned earlier, for the authorities to make sure that his uh, wish was honored, uh, making sure that he's uh, laid to rest uh, beside his mother uh, here at the public cemetery. Uh, so when, for example, at the next uh, Heroes Day celebration, the Heroes Day observance, uh, there will, of course, be more reason uh, to be here at the public cemetery. Of course, uh, the Nella Re Robinson will already be here. Yes, in yes, at correct. The here as well. So come October, we shall be back. And uh, of course, we'll get uh, more details as to when that uh, monument will be erected at the National Heroes Park yes. uh, in honor of Celeste Bryant Park. So we're seeing the removal of the flag now, um, Garfield. Um, and of course, with ultimate precision, more precision than you, than we folded our bed sheets, Garfield. Absolutely. This will be folded. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and then presented to the widow, we suspect, Lady Patricia Bird, once it's been folded. And there is, to the millimeter, mm. uh, protocols in place to ensure that this is done accurately, properly, mm -hmm. meticulously, punctiliously, so that there is, in other words, they are all the officers mm. uh, of the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force, the Bureau Party, who would have been doing this. And by the way, uh, there are no hand signals or any sort of gestures mm. in terms of the way they uh, give their instructions and commands. It is all I issued in uh, low tones. Mm. Their commands are issued uh, uh, so that uh, each member of the Bureau Party understands clearly what to do. They would have gone through several simulations, uh, simulations and rehearsals and now it's a matter of just executing it properly and well and one thing the army does is to execute clinically <coughs> and properly In indeed indeed uh, we, we saw of course just passing us uh, the chief of defense staff uh, colonel Talbert benjamin earlier we saw brigadier um Trevor thomas he was at the, the state funeral we saw him earlier as well uh, and of course the defense was well well known for its discipline Precisely. Right, so still being folded, as we said, it we will be folded to precision. Uh, there are eight, <laughs> eight members folding this one flag just to ensure that it is precisely folded, presented in pristine condition to the widow of Celeste, that's Lady Patricia Bird, who will be the first to lay her wreath, actually, this afternoon, after all of the other, um, after we had the, the last post, one minute, silence, etc. Precisely. Uh, and of course, uh, the members of the Antigua Barb Barbuda Defense Force uh, band are in position uh, to make sure that they are able to play. Uh, actually, they're just on the outs on the outside, uh, just at the ring of the uh, fence, the perimeter fencing of the public cemetery, making sure that they are in a position uh, to play the last post and the revalet. Mm. So the flag will be presented in a short while. So that uh, represents the start of the proceedings, the removal of the flag. Uh, was uh, certainly one of the first orders of business and the presentation of the flag. Then we have the last post, one minute silence, and then the revalet. Mm -hmm. I think everybody now has uh, found, a p found a way to be close enough where they can see what's happening. I think mm -hmm. they are kind of <laughs> uh, looking for positions where they can see what's happening. I think that has ended. By the way, uh, we actually lost count. The 19th yeah, gun did. salute went <laughs> off. I mean, so that must must have been it. Otherwise, it must be that uh, when he is not 
third when the coffin is being lowered, then we'll perhaps have the last one at that yes. point. But uh, let's see what I don't remember counting 19. 19. No, no, so no, let's no, see no. what happens here. Yes. All right, so camera getting first and crew. We're almost at the end of the, the removal of the flag and the folding there. As we've been telling you, it will then be presented to the widow so of Celeste, that's Lady Patricia Bird. Um, we're just seeing um, the director of communications here asking some of the family members to get a little closer. Now, I think things will go very swiftly from here, uh, Garfield. Um, there will be some singing, but I suspect that's what that will happen while other things are, are happening. But I think generally everything has gone. Uh, precisely to plan. Uh, 3.30 here in the afternoon in the Eastern Caribbean. We, thank, we say a uh, very warm welcome to those individuals who are watching via uh, from the on the World Wide Web on our Facebook page, on our website, uh, who are of course following the proceedings right across the world from as far away as uh, Asia and Australia and Europe all the way uh, of several countries tuned into this broadcast, especially at a time when several individuals would have wanted to but yes. couldn't have been here yeah. physically. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they are uh, uh, tuned in uh, to the broadcast as we continue to make sure that we are uh, following the proceedings very closely. Yes, and bringing you, if not, if not ball by ball, fold by fold coverage now of the flag. Um, we've been pleased to be with you from since early this morning. We'll be with you until the end. Um, it's a very warm afternoon, immaculate sunshine here. You see the musical prelude seems to be getting a little louder. I'm wondering when we'll pretty soon begin with some singing at this point, but the folding of the flag almost complete. And of course, yes. as soon as that, uh, and uh, the, it will be presented in a, in fact, at this point, it is going to be uh, taken to be presented. Uh, of course, we are capturing all of that for you in live and in living color. And as soon as the proceedings start in full in terms of of course, go over to make sure that our viewers uh, can join in, yes, and, can join in and can enjoy uh, the beautiful, immaculate singing that we've had. Yes. All right, so members of the Tibari Defense Force who would have hoisted and, and carried the coffin are making their way out from under the tent. I think for the most part, their job for today is complete. They would have worked really, really hard today. See beads of sweat appearing. Um, Celeste was not, not, not a small man. He was <laughs> six, seven in height, if I remember uh, correctly. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, all his insignia indeed. was stopped by uh, the national hero. hero. Yes, indeed. Carried by the hat orderlies. So we're almost at the point, and so the uh, coffin has been on top of the two which have been uh, prepared. Indeed. There is a red carpet, As regal look to the proceedings. His children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as the flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. We know that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth nor any other creature can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We know that if this earthly house of our tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Since our brother has departed out of this life, and Almighty God in his mercy has taken to himself, we therefore commit his body to the ground, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, earth to earth, Ensure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, From henceforth blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors.
All right, so the coffin now being lowered as we've heard gun salutes from the Tiwabi Defense Force. I've heard it two actually. They're now standing at ease before we continue. So there we go. So we had the last post, then a minute's silence. It was deliberate that we did not uh, uh, the say anything earlier. And they were from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, saith the Spirit, for the rest from the labors, let us pray. O merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, Raise us up, we pray, from the death of sin to the new life of righteousness, that when we shall depart this life, we shall be found acceptable in your sight. This we pray to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Grant to the bereaved consolation and faith in this time of distress and trial. The blessed hope in the coming of your kingdom the sustaining grace in the fellowship of your people, and steadfastness in the service of your name, and the doing of your will, to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Support us, O Lord, all the day long of this troublous life until the shadows lengthen. The evening comes, the bitter world is hushed, 
the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant unto us safe lodging, holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So now I want to make sure that everybody, make sure I keep on I'm asking them. And we're going to take out our songbooks and we're going to sing. So please, we ask you all to join with us as we unite our voices and we'll sing, How Great Thou Art.
shine, Jesus shine. Lord, the light of your love is shining.
facilitate the coven, I'm going to ask us to play to God be the glory, great things he had done. To God be the glory, great things he had done, so loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life at a moment for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. First, we will have Lady Patricia Bird. Lady Patricia Bird. So the laying of the wreaths now, um, Ursula will pretty much signal the wrap up of the uh, of the of this leg of it, and indeed for the state funeral today, of course the family has indicated that it acknowledges the support and condolences, and it is indicated that they wish to express their sincere gratitude and appreciation for each act of each act of kindness that you've extended to us during this difficult time. Your deeds, your comforting words, your phone calls, cards, flowers, prayers, and acts of God's love will forever remain dear to our hearts. The acknowledgement there from the family. Uh, as they reflect, of course, on the significant uh, appreciation, I mean, condolences, commiserations shown, support shown by uh, so many people in the public, not only from officialdom, but just the man on the street. Yes, sir. I'm sure they couldn't have called individuals by name. I've thanked everybody by name, but that would not have been about to see the, the first wreath. Uh, they're just finalizing. And then we will have the laying of the first wreath. That will be, of course, by 
uh, that we've been presented by a A few short moments to see that uh, in a very short order as they're making uh, the final adjustment. The final resting place. So uh, it is now uh, the first reef. Uh, in a short while, as soon as there is a proper sealing of the tomb, uh, we will have the wreath being laid by Lady Patricia Bird, and that will take place in a very, very short time as well. I think that uh, some, uh, the crowd on the outside has thinned out just a little bit, but uh, still, many individuals are still essentially lining the perimeter to just get a glimpse of the events here, the final rites for Celeste Bryant Bird on this, the occasion of the uh, state funeral for him. Uh, just about four o'clock or just heading, well, actually just about four o'clock here uh, in St. John's in the Eastern Caribbean. And uh, we're getting ready almost now for the uh, wreaths to be laid, signaling the end of the proceedings here as well. Members of the family looking on Ursula and uh, they, of course, I mean, so many mixed emotions here. There would be appreciation for the support of the public and for so many who have offered their commiserations, their condolences. There would be the grief of the loss. And notwithstanding the fact that there was that transition period, there would be still that grief that comes from just having to deal with that level of loss. And so uh, mixed emotions, I'm pretty sure, for the family as they look on uh, the, uh, the tomb being sealed. Uh, of course, with the coffin being already lowered and all in place now, the uh, tomb having been sealed by the uh, workmen here, making sure that all is set. Normally, you would have the mixing of concrete and so on. None of that today. Uh, it was all pre-done and just making sure that there is, and they're checking back now to just make sure that it is properly, it has been properly sealed. Um, well, they, they'll probably tell you in a very short time. Thanks. You talk about mixed emotions, Godfrey. There must be a sense of pride as well. State funerals don't happen very often, and, uh, and your loved one must have made that significant a contribution to be afforded a state funeral. We've had a few official funerals in 2020, a uh, few in 2021 as well, uh, but state funerals don't happen very often, and so there must be the sense of pride. Uh, his daughter, eldest of Daniel uh, Bird Brown, would have spoken very mm -hmm. glowingly about her father the during the eulogy the earlier. Of the wreath. Going first, Lady Patricia Bird. She will be followed by Mr. Curtis Byrne. Of course, as Curtis Bird prepares to lay his wreath, it must be very, very tough for Lady Patricia Bird uh, to lose uh, a pretty much a lifelong partner. It's, uh, uh, you know, certainly uh, commiserations to her and condolences. And may she stay strong, may his memory be a blessing for her and the rest of the family. As she obviously was uh, there, very pensive as she laid the wreath. And uh, Curtis Bird as well. Curtis Bird as well laying his. Um, of course, uh, Bird Legacy, very well known throughout Antigua Barbera, throughout the Eastern Caribbean, the entire Caribbean, to be to be honest. And he, of course, as well, would have been feeling a sense of loss uh, at, at the, the passing of uh, Celeste. We now have the uh, Governor General, His Excellency, Sir Rodney Williams. He's just received his wreath from a member of the Royal Police Force of Antigua Barbuda, and he'll be third in line to lay his wreath. And of course, uh, Sir, Sir Rodney would have paid glowing tributes yesterday in, some, in, in that release that we read excerpts of it this morning. Uh, of course, uh, he would have worked very closely with Celeste, serving in his cabinet uh, while he was Prime Minister between 1994 and 2004. And Sir uh, Rodney would have had the privilege well, of being congratulated of Barbuda, as he was appointed as Governor General. Brown. Prime Minister Brown is up next with his wreath. I think Prime Minister Brown, in his uh, tributes uh, to, in his tribute today, uh, was 
very profound in the way he recollected the events and essentially explaining what would have happened in terms of the uh, in terms of what would have happened with the, with his own succession of the leadership uh, to the leadership of the party now he's laying the wreath uh, at the tomb of uh, Celeste Bird and of course uh, as i said the Next, the, the, the audience is kind of thinned out, but many people are staying around for, of course, the, the laying of the wreaths. Order. We will start with Mr. Bird, uh, Mr. Curtis Bird, brother. We've had His Excellency the Governor General and the Prime Minister. But I'm going to have a wreath laid by visiting heads of state and government, and we would have uh, mentioned at least four of them who would have made representation here this afternoon, and they're relaying their wreaths on behalf of their countries as well. Uh, several states represented through their consuls, ambassadors, high commissioners, uh, but it might have been difficult to have had uh, actually heads of state and government being here because of the challenges with COVID and so on. Uh, it's, it's really upended all our lives, really. Indeed, uh, we made mention, I uh, saw the, the representative from Barbados lay his. United States of America. And then, of course, we have Ambassador mm -hmm. Linda who will be laying hers next. Uh, she would have paid her tribute earlier as well in that priving, private viewing in, in Parliament this morning. Pastor Lester uh, lay in state uh, at about 8.30 this morning. She would have made her way through. So it's good to see that the representation is being made, uh, recognizing the significance of the, the lifetimes and, and, and the contribution of Celeste to national and regional development. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so now uh, we're having, uh, in terms of the next wreath that is being laid, Ambassador for Venezuela will be laying her wreath. Well, she's actually represented, uh, well, it's actually not the ambassador, uh, but uh, it's the v uh, vice minister for uh, foreign affairs. Uh, he's actually chairman of the Petra Caribe uh, Fund as well. Uh, we, we actually interviewed him uh, in, in, in Venezuela when we covered the uh, Petra Caribe uh, summit. Um, uh, and so, uh, yes, he's, he's, a, he's a close friend. Actually, uh, the chairman of uh, the Western Indies Oil Company as well, because uh, yes, Peter Veza uh, is, is, is a huge shareholder in Western Indies Oil Company. All right, so we're going to continue with the visiting dignitaries who will be uh, paying their tributes by the laying of reach. We've got another member of the uh, armed forces just walking up to present uh, their wreath. In, uh, to Londell Benjamin, uh, who is uh, yes, correct. He's deputising for the speaker today. All right, so still a very somber, solemn occasion here, uh, as we see all the, the wreaths being laid first by the family, then by dignitaries. Um, we're going to um, have well, the president of the Senate, Senator William, Ellington Williams Grant. She's Next, on site as well. We will have the leader of the opposition. Of course, before we get there, we'll go to the leader of the opposition, the Honorable Jamal Pringle, who we saw earlier make his way inside the St. John's Public Cemetery. He'll be laying his wreath, actually just about to receive from a member of the, the armed forces. And as we speak of Senator Lindsay Williams, Grant, is just walking past us. Uh, Always very immaculately attired, the President of the Senate, Senator Lindsay Williams Grant. It's good to see her out paying her respects as well. So, the Honorable Jamal Pringle, now you're seeing on, on screen, uh, he's now uh, laying his wreath as presented by a member of the Armed Force, in recognition of the stellar service of Celesta. And um, Senator Gail Christie would have spoken earlier, Garfield, about uh, Solester's principles of not really Next getting into dogfights with members of the opposition. Of and he believed that the, political dis the level of political discourse should be raised and we should we'll intelligently America. agree to disagree. Uh, and so it's good to see that the members of the opposition are here uh, paying their respects as well. Absolutely, indeed. And uh, a number of wreaths still to be laid. In fact, there's a, a long line of individuals who are actually uh, in queue uh, to lay their wreaths as well. Because, uh, and I think that's a picture, that's, a, that's, an, that's emblematic of the kind of contribution that Celeste would have, would have made. Uh, the fact that so many individuals 
not only f uh, in the country but across the region and, the, and beyond would be eager to uh, lay their wreath as, uh, and to remember the day and to remember the fact that they would have been here. Uh, so it, it, it's been called the end of an era, the death of Celesta, and, uh, and certainly th that, that explains the, the fact that this is a momentous occasion. Not only is it a somber, yes. solemn occasion, yes. but it's also and a momentous one, the end of an era and an opportunity to reflect and to be inspired by his legacy as well. Indeed, uh, we, as you just heard, we've got representation from uh, Japan as well that will be made. Um, so visiting members, of course, he's not a visiting member, local representative here, paying his respects by uh, laying a wreath at, on the tomb of uh, Celesta. Uh, that long line of dignitaries and other interested parties we saw included uh, Remember Asset Michael, Member of Parliament uh, for St. Peter. He was waiting in the wings as well to lay his wreath. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, Poland. S several consuls, and one of the consuls is uh, Honor Consul uh, for Poland, Twentigan Barbuda. That's uh, Mr. Gregory Georges. He'll be getting ready. Uh, to, there you go. He's going to be collecting his wreath. And in a short while, we'll have the Honor Consul for Jamaica, uh, Twentigan Barbuda, Dr. Anika Campbell. She'll also be laying her wreath as well. So uh, there we go. The wreath is coming up for Mr. Georges, who is also the head uh, CEO of Western Indies Oil Company. Uh, he would uh, have been, as I said, very, very close working relationship uh, with Venezuela's, uh, well, Venezuela's representative who laid the wreath today because uh, Venezuela's representative is a chair of, uh, the, Petro of, of uh, the West Indies Oil Company, actually, because uh, they hold a significant stake in the West Indies Oil Company Pedro through PDVSA. The diplomatic corps, as we, we saw Poland. Next, uh, we will have Chief of Defense Staff. Well, Chief of Defense Staff is coming up next. Colonel Talbot Benjamin, who we saw arrive with Police Commissioner Atley Rodney earlier, he will be laying his wreath momentarily. Very stately. Um, <laughs> always very stately uh, attired, Colonel Talbot Benjamin. He's just now receiving his wreath and he will be uh, doing an about turn. I think I remember that military term at least. Yes. Um, <laughs> and making his way to the tomb to lay his wreath. Yes. Absolutely. And it's always fan fantastic to see military men uh, and law enforcers generally lay wreaths because uh, it just is marked by such precision and such the... Uh, yes, absolutely. Quite <laughs> doing it with a plum. Next, we will have Commissioner of so Police. Ms. Commissioner Atli Rodney. Atli Rodney is next to receive his. Um, as you said, uh, not, not to um, uh, let us call out the uh, Royal Police Force of Antigua Barbary as well, always with precision as well. Uh, we look forward to seeing both members of the armed forces, both groups of armed, uh, the armed forces uh, present. Usually we see them at national independence celebrations, national honor ceremonies, um, and, and we applaud uh, their drilling, etc. It's good to see them out this afternoon and members of both sets of, bo members of both sets, I should say, represented here this afternoon. It's good to see that the conditions have cooled down markedly as well. Uh, there's a very nice cooling breeze and a few clouds have actually obscured the sun for a second. So a little bit of respite for individuals here to get uh, a, a, a well-needed break from uh, the sweltering mid-afternoon sun. Yes, uh, uh, we've seen President of the Antigua Barbuda Trees and Labour Union, Wigley George. He would have paid tribute earlier. He's, he's Next, we uh, have Member of Parliament for the St. John's Rural Re East constituency. Right. So, Minister Maria Brown should be presenting her wreath now. Yes, she's the Member of Parliament for St. John's Rural East, the constituency that uh, Celeste Bird uh, represented for so many years, successfully between 1976 and uh, 2004, and then again in 2008. So, Of course, um, Mr. Maria Brown, perhaps not as au fait with all the, the military precision that she could do, but doing a fairly good job nonetheless, collecting her wreath and, and now laying it near the foot of the tomb, actually, because there have been so many wreaths added, uh, Garfield, I'm afraid. Space is running out. full. Next yes, space is limited. The Chancery of the Orders and Decorations of Antigua and Barbuda. Right. So, Maurice Merchant. Indeed. And and for the permanent uh, secretary in the office of the governor general. Right, by, by, the, right, by members of the transfer. Yes. Of course, the salutes come out as well. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, and just to remind our viewers and listeners as well that um, the chancery will be handling 
nominations for national honors as well. Uh, the deadline is September 30, so we are just about a month away from the re final receipt of uh, nominations if you want to nominate someone for a national honor or award uh, come November 1 in this country. Yes. Indeed, indeed. And uh, talking about awards, uh, Celeste would have uh, received the country's highest honor uh, of national hero, and uh, you would have heard in the sermon earlier at the Civic University Stadium, Stadium the, uh, the, uh, the, the reverend talking about how richly deserving that honor was, considering what he would have done for the country's uh, development here. And uh, as with Celeste, much opposition, but still persevering. Um, and and uh, the Prime Minister Donald Bagastian Brown was resolute that it was going to happen. It was his nomination for Celeste to get the um, to get the award of national hero. There, there were mass protests, if I remember correctly, Garfield, in this country, uh, persons declaring that that could never happen. In fact, uh, one one senator on the government side, who would have been on the other side, would have uh, threatened some violence against him, apologizing for that in Parliament uh, last week when he was asked to speak. Uh, and so I think on reflection, I think we can all recognize the immense contribution Celeste made. And at the end, there was really no, no doubt about his deserving the national honor. Indeed, indeed. And I think that uh, uh, pretty much you could say that's a settled issue uh, either way at this point. So uh, uh, no, now, of course, attention will turn towards reflecting on uh, that life well lived, the legacy that he would have left, uh, the legacy which would have been left tangibly as well, indeed. in tangible terms to a large extent, because there are edifices which represent uh, the, the contribution that he would have made, as I said, Heritage Key, Parliament Building, the Prime Minister's Office Complex, um, Abbott, uh, several, I mean, AUA in terms of his conceptualization of that, uh, some of them uh, intangible uh, in terms of edifices, but actually lasting policy decisions, such as, for example, the education tax. So there is that opportunity now to reflect on his life and legacy, to reflect on that contribution and to lay the foundation, lay the groundwork for other individuals to actually uh, run with it. Because essentially, uh, leadership and life is a baton. We essentially lay the foundation. We run our leg, and we run our leg well, as b best as possible, and we pass the baton on to other individuals who will come after us to make sure that they can carry that on so that We're each no time invite. individuals are able to keep advancing. And that's the most important thing. Yeah, loving the sports pun and puns and references there, Garfield, yeah, in terms indeed. of running, <laughs> running, running relays. Uh, and, and Donald Bagaston Brown would have said in his uh, uh, tribute at the funeral as well, it wasn't a matter of not agreeing with Celeste's principles when he challenged for leadership of the party. It was a matter of breathing new life into the party um, after having lost the election. And, and, and that is what they did. Um, and um, even in winning... The, uh, the, 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 the primary to be the leader of the party, still affording Celeste a seat ahead of him, so to speak, um, granting him um, leader emeritus status so that he's able to recognize the immense contribution that he has made. So it's, it, it, although the baton has been passed, we can never really forget the contribution, the legacy of, of Celeste. And there's now even a call for even more places to be named in honor of, of the great man. You know, we had in May the, the renaming of the Mount St. John's Medical Center, but there's a call for even more to be done in terms of recognizing his contribution. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, we're getting, we're winding down now because it uh, will be time for. Uh, uh, let's double check if uh, Wiggly George has already laid his wreath. He was actually next in terms of the Antigua Trades and Labour Union. Uh, so just a little bit of a pause in the proceedings here as. There will be other mourners, members of the general public, who will be able to lay their wreaths. And I'm looking at about at least uh, four more individuals who are lining up with wreaths to be able to lay those as well. So uh, let's see to what extent. Now invite uh, the Antigua Trades and Labour well, Union there you go. to lay their wreaths. So now, Mr. Uh, now Wiggly George will be able to lay his wreath. There you go. Okay. All right. There are about three, at least, well, four other wreaths that I'm looking at. Uh, and that may well bring an end to the laying of the wreaths here at this point. We can see, um, and, and as we said, the, 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 the top of the tomb is basically full. We've now had to resort to laying some at the, the feet on the, on the ground. Pretty much as, happen, as happens yearly with the cenotaph at these yeah. bus stations. Absolutely. Uh, it's always, there's always never enough space by the time we get down to the last few uh, persons paying their respects. Uh, but as you said, and they're, they're not very small ones waiting in the wing there, Garfield. I'm seeing a very large wreath left to be laid as well so um they will, have to be, they will have to be creative i guess in finding space for for all these wreaths as, as, as we uh, pay tribute the here the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all evermore amen
Thank you, Honourable. As, as we uh, get ready for the departure of uh, Governor General Sir Rodney Williams, uh, I, th I think there are, there are several other individuals in addition to the, the, the official queue who are also will be laying their wreath. I see uh, Honourable Samantha Marshall uh, queuing up as well with a wreath that she has, hasn't has yet uh, laid. So let's see how uh, we, we might be still having a few uh, after this as well. In, in other words, uh, Honourable Samantha Marshall now making her way up as well. As there we're seeing the Chief of Defence Staff and the Police Commissioner escorting uh, the Governor General to his vehicle as he makes his departure. Prime Minister Brown. Yeah, we've now been asked to stand for the departure of the Prime Minister, the Honourable Gaston Brown. No doubt he will leave, yes, with Minister Maria Brown as well. Flanked by the Police Chief, well, Police Commissioner and the Chief of Defence Staff and their aides as well. Uh, we've seen Minister Maria Brown's mom as well walking with them as they, they depart. We've now seen members of government depart as well. The Honourable T Attorney General, uh, Ted Roy Benjamin. We've seen Honourable E.P. Chet Green, Honourable Melford Nicholas, Honourable Sir Malwin Joseph, Honourable Londell Benjamin. They're now making their departure as well. So as uh, members of the government uh, may take their leave, there will be opportunities for individuals to uh, just make sure that they lay their wreaths. As I said, not much space left, so they will have to, for example, just uh, uh, make the extension out to ensure that they're able to uh, lay their wreaths as well. So individuals walking up, general mem uh, members of the public and other mourners uh, having an opportunity to lay their wreaths at uh, the tomb now of Celeste Bryant Bird. Pretty much, pretty much in the at the sunset of the occasion here, in as much as Celeste has reached the sunset of his life, and now uh, uh, making the way, creating a foundation, laying the foundation for a new generation of individuals who will be visionaries, who will be inspired by him, and will be inspired by his great vision. But what is clear uh, is that obviously, members the, of the public, he, he, he was able to, to lay he was able to dream to big dreams, and then, uh, and and and. Uh, Embrace big area. visions Please and enact them, execute them, and work on them, which was absolutely immaculate. And Play I think for that now, he's been given all the plaudits that he fully deserves. Yes, um, he's always he's always talking about catching the vision, seeing the dream, and um, yeah, no doubt. Um, many have been speaking about the, the legacy he would have left and and the way that he has. He's pretty much asked that those who've come, who come after him uh, would, would conduct themselves as well, an open door policy, a love for the people, uh, equitable distribution of wealth, those, those, those things that he held dear and he would have wanted to see passed down uh, through generations of leaders to have come after him. Of course, the leader after him, would have, it, well, within the Antigua Labour Party would have been the Honourable Gaston Brown and he no doubt would have wanted to emulate what he would have seen uh, in the former Prime Minister. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, I think that uh, we're just seeing a few individuals, uh, the remaining individuals laying their wreaths now at, uh, indeed, uh, some members of the public having that opportunity uh, to lay their wreaths at the tomb of Celeste Brown Bird here at the public cemetery. So getting his wish, being interred beside his mother, and of course uh, with a monument to be erected at the National Heroes Park to pay respects to the national hero who has been transformative, who has been visionary, who has been immaculate in terms of the contribution that he's made, praised for that uh, level of contribution. Uh, and now we're seeing uh, there, there will be, of course, uh, indeed, All right. there will, will be the singing of the, the red flag and seeing members of the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party uh, gathering uh, for the singing of the red flag. So, uh, that, that of course, we'll also capture that as well for or, or viewers and our listeners. Yes, of course. Every every departing member of the Antigua Barbuda Trades and Labour Union, of course, everyone who would have passed, there would have been members of the union, members of the Antigua Barbuda Labour Party, who would gather together here at the, the burial and they would, of course, sing the red flag. Very popular song. Indeed, indeed. So we're getting ready for now the uh, the red flag to be uh, sung. And essentially you're hearing the very vociferous a uh, very stentorian voice now of yes. Senator Mary Claire Hurst, General Secretary of the Antigua Barbuda Labour Party. A call to arms, um, if you would, you know, gathering the troops together and the comrades together, my apologies, uh, and they will sing uh, very robustly and, and wave whatever red or their programs in their hand uh, to signify that uh, the, the falling of one of the brethren, one of the comrades. 
Indeed. And, uh, uh, and he was uh, an immaculate comrade, of course, and the, the leader. Uh, and after having uh, been replaced as, and succeeded as the leader of the party was leader emeritus. Uh, and, and, and seen, uh, given that level of respect and dignity, and Prime Minister Brown indicating that he made a special effort to make sure that he was gracious in extending this privilege uh, to Celeste as leader emeritus. Let us have a listen. And here their limbs go stiff and cold. Their hearts blood died in every fold. Then raise the scarlet standard high. Beneath the shades we live and die. Though cowards flinch and traitors snare, maintain your distance, please. We'll keep the red flag flying here. It waved above our infant might. When all ahead seems dark as night, it witnessed many a deeds and vow. We must not change its color now. Then raise the scarlet standard high. Beneath its shades, we live and die. Though cowards flinch and traitors snare, we will keep the red flag flying here. It will recall the triumph past. It gives the hope of peace at last. The banners bright, the symbol plain of human rights and human gain. Then raise the scarlet standard high. Beneath its shades we live and die. Though cowards flinch and traitors snare, we will keep the red flag flying here. With heads uncovered, swear we all to bear it onward till we fall. Come dungeons dark or gallows grim, this song shall be our part in him. Then raise the scarlet standard high. Beneath the shades we live and die. Though cowards flinch and traitors snare, we will keep the red flag flying here. Swing your hands by your side, solidarity forever, three times. Oh, son. Swing your hands, don't hold nobody's hands. Swing your hand. Finish with that. COVID rampant. Oh, solidarity forever. Oh, solidarity forever. Oh, solidarity forever. For the union makes us strong. Last time, solidarity forever. So, so there we go. So the uh, solidarity forever, and of course, raise the red flag. A song there, marshalled by uh, the general secretary of the Antigua Barbuda Labour Party, Senator Mary Claire Hurst, who also is the minister of state in tourism 
and investment, also the chair, the chair of the Antigua no Port Authority. The uh, so quite a few hats you wear as leader of government business as well in the Senate. So, but in this, uh, in, in, in this respect, she's certainly uh, the, uh, making sure that she marshals the troops, marshals the comrades uh, to, to, to sing the raise, raise the red flag and solidarity forever. But what is clear, uh, as, she, right, as she said at the last po po point there, indicating that may he may, may rest in peace, Celeste Bryant Bird, uh, Comrade uh, Emeritus, a uh, leader emeritus of the Antigua Barbuda Labour Party. And of course, uh, he, attention now turns to the legacy and to ensuring that, as I said, that we can really build on that legacy that he would have laid. Yes, uh, very, very uh, lost singing, lost the singing there. Uh, we heard some of them shouting, rest in peace, Lester, rest in peace, Papa, as if, oh, yeah. you know, they're, they're both birds, of course, and the rich legacy would have lived on through them both. Um, and it's good to see that the turnout here this afternoon, they stayed until the very end. It's been a long, long day. It's been almost uh, six hours between the start of the state funeral and now between the, final, between the start and the final laying of the wreath. And uh, they've stuck around and they wanted to make sure that they, they were able to sing and to send him off in their own very special way. Happy that they would have gotten a chance to do it amid all the protocols that we've been asked to observe uh, this evening. They would have had to make a few changes, indicating that, uh, for example, swing their hands at their sides as opposed to holding um, hands. Uh, as we heard Senator Mary Claire Hurst saying, uh, COVID-19 has put paid to that. And she said it was rampant. And of course, there, that's, that's the case because the Delta variant of COVID-19, Delta and Alpha, have actually been the dominant strains. In fact, Delta has now uh, marginally gone up to 51% in terms of the transmission of it. It actually replaced what uh, Dr. Lester Simon would regard as a wild type, the original uh, version of COVID-19. So obviously the protocols have to be followed. Everyone here has been has worn their masks uh, very, very well. I it didn't, uh, except for a few cases where individuals are wearing their masks under their noses. But I think generally there there's been good uh, adherence to to the protocols, except perhaps that there was a little bit of a crowding inside the cemetery at one point. But I think uh, that might have been it's might have been difficult to have uh, prevented that indeed. But I think generally I think the proceedings went very, very well indeed. Befitting of uh, or, or fitting a uh, fitting farewell for Ladies the life of a great of leader of Antigua and Barbuda. You as and there we go. So you the announcement for individuals not to congregate, but to leave uh, the facility at this point because there can be social gatherings down to 10. Yes. And uh, this certainly far exceeds that. Yes. So individuals being asked to uh, leave the premises, leave the cemetery immediately to ensure that they disperse.